I now call to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, February 20th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Alahuzas. Here. Vice Mayor Banther. Commissioner Sieber. Here. Commissioner Kikta. Here. Commissioner Carr. Here. Tonight's invocation will be given me by Reverend Smith from the uh, Herman National Baptist Church. If you please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Also, the Boy Scouts are going to present all colors tonight. Let us pray. Lord, we come to thank you for this great city of Tarpon Springs. We thank you for the beauty. We thank you for the friendship. We thank you for our city leaders. We pray that you will continue to bless them, crown their heads with wisdom and knowledge as they lead the city. Tonight, Lord, we remember our children. We ask you to, to bless them, to look at upon all the school children in this state and across this country, and just put your arm of protection around them in the face of tragedy. We pray also for our first responders, Lord, that you would bless them as they work each day to protect our cities, lead them and guide them, and put your arms around them. Now, Lord, we pray your blessings upon this meeting tonight. In your great name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Hello. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our commission meeting tonight. Before we start the meeting, I would like to uh, ask you to join me in a moment of silence in, for the victims of the mass shooting of the storm at Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Thank you. We will start our meeting tonight with the uh, public comments of the items that will not be discussed tonight. If you have any uh, comments, please come forward, state your name and your address for the record, you'll be given four minutes. Any public comments? No comments, thank you. We go to the item number one, which is the presentation. Sunset Beach Concert Series presentation to sponsors, Mr. Dolan. Good evening, Board of Commissioners and Mayor. I want to thank you for having us tonight. Our Sunset Beach Concert Series is in its 17th season. It's held every month out of Sunset Beach and is a free concert. If it wasn't for our sponsors, we would not be able to put this on every year ongoing. Um, Last year we had two amazing sponsors and this year they actually renewed their sponsorship. So today I would like to acknowledge our sponsors for the last two years. From Furman Chevrolet, we have Alan Craig who is Director of Corporate Sponsorship. And from Florida Hospital North Pinellas, we have Patricia Williams who is the President and CEO. Without their um, contributions to us, we wouldn't be able to put these on every month, which are held the first Thursday of every month from February through November down at Sunset Beach. So, Please say thank you to our two sponsors for their continued support of our wonderful concerts. Thank you. On behalf of the city of Tarpa Springs, allow me to thank you for your uh, generosity. Uh, because of your finance help, finan financial help, and the uh, hard work of our uh, 
our employees and the volunteers were able to provide that service to the people and have uh, the uh, Sunset Beach concert. So thank you very much. The, uh, we would like to uh, present you with a presentation. Furman Chevrolet of Tarpa Springs, presented to Furman Chevrolet of Tarpa Springs for their continuing and generous support of the 2017 City of Tarpa Springs Sunset Beach Concert Series. If you please come forward, sir. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Hi, I'm Alan Craig, Director of Corporate Partnerships for Furman Automotive Group. Um, this is a very nice award to be received here for us tonight on behalf of all of our uh, Furman Automotive dealerships here in the North Pinellas County, our BMW, Mini, Ford, Mazda, and Chevy dealerships. We're very excited to be part of the Tarpon Springs community. Thank you very much. Thank you. The uh, next presentation is for the Florida Hospital North Pinellas, presented to the Florida Hospital North Pinellas for their continuing and generous support of the 2017 of Tarpa Springs Sunset Beach Concert Series. Ms. William, and thank you for everything that the hospital does to the city. Thank you. Oh, we are so proud to be part of this community, and it's um, just events like these that makes this a very, very special community, and we are just very honored to partner with you and support a wonderful cause like this. So thank you so much for, on behalf of all our employees, staff, uh, and I'm here with our executive, Jason Dunkel, as well. We uh, want to thank you for allowing us to participate with you. So thank you again for this recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Any commission comments? Commission Sieber. I would just like to say I want to thank the Recreation Department for this job that they've been doing all these years. This is not only a wonderful and fun event, but it brings our community uh, together. And Furman, I think, started it two or three years ago uh, with their support. Uh, and Florida Hospital, we couldn't do it without you, so thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Here, then, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for your contributions. The next item on the agenda is another presentation for uh, the Wastewater Treatment Plan Operations Award. Before I read this, Brooklyn, before I read this, uh, ex, the uh, Word of Excellence, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Smith, Mr. Liqueurs, and all the employees that they're working on our uh, wastewater um, treatment plan, which is one of the best in the area. They're doing an excellent job, and this is the second time in a row that we're receiving this award. And I would like to thank them and congratulate them for the uh, exceptional work that they do. 2017 Plant Operations Excellence Award. In furtherance of Florida Department of Environmental Protection's goal is to ensuring safe wastewater and drinking water for all people in Florida. This certificate is hereby awarded to the City of Tarpa Springs Advanced Wastewater Treatment Facility in recognition of outstanding operation through dedicated professionalism awarded at the uh, 2018 Focus in Change Seminar Series event held in Haines City, Florida, presented on 6th day of February 2018. Mr. Lecourers and Mr. Smith, both of you, if you uh, will. Okay. Can we all come forward? Yeah, thank you. Mark? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, you too. Thank you. 
Great job, Mark. Mayor, if I may just add a few words. Of course you can. Uh, good evening. I'm Paul Smith, Public Services Director, and on behalf of the Public Services Department, I'm pleased to see this recognition for staff in particular and the city as a whole. Here with me tonight were Raymond Page, Utility Superintendent. Ray, if you could stand, please. And also Rob Marcinsic, our Chief Wastewater Plant Operator. Rob, if you could also please stand. I know who's planning to make it tonight, who was a big part of getting this award, is Frank Fulgham, our wastewater division manager, but he was unable to attend. I just want to say, though, that this team, along with our dedicated operators, is what makes it happen. But we couldn't do it without the support of our leadership, all of you up here that continuously give us good direction and support when we need to uh, get approvals for things to move forward. As the mayor mentioned, this is about an outstanding commitment to excellence, dedicated professionalism and an impeccable history of record-keeping compliance. I'd like to, to state that the wastewater plant operates 365 days a year, 24 hours per day. So I applaud the commitment, pride, and capabilities of our operators and our leadership team. And I thank you all very much. Any other public comments on this item? Any commission comments? Vice Mayor Pam. Yes, thank you. I just want to say um, we're always proud of uh, all of our employees, but whenever a division puts Tarpon Springs on the map and gets an award, uh, that's something e uh, extra special. So thank you for all your men and women for all the hard work you do, both at the wastewater and, of course, <coughs> our uh, water plant as well. Thank you. Thank you. We now go into the item number three, which is peaceful tarpon update. Robert Singer. Can I say something first? Um, I, I just wanted to say thank you. I, I invited you guys to come tonight because of a conference you, you had uh, recently that I attended, and you've come such a long way, and uh, I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. And good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Mary Sharrow. I am with Peace for Tarpon, but I am honored tonight to be here to talk about filling in at the New York City's Thrive mental health conference. Um, last year, uh, council member Sieber uh, was invited and uh, attended their inaugural uh, year of this uh, conference. And she was also asked to speak and be on a panel. So I think that was pretty special for Tarpon Springs. Uh, she couldn't make it this most recent year. And so I was really glad to fill in. Um, but each day it is becoming more and more apparent that uh, mental health is the truly a national crisis. And as a nation, we're not doing it right. We, um, it's also as a nation, we're going to have to um, figure out a way to bring it to our nation, but it is going to start in communities just like this one. Peace for Tarpon has been raising awareness as to all of the problems, personal and uh, in the community. And if you scratch the surface, you're going to find unresolved trauma in all of those instances. And until we address the un unresolved trauma, it's almost like we're mopping up the sink of the overflowing unresolved trauma that is in all of our communities. And until we address the root cause and turn off the tap, we're just going to continue mopping. So uh, the first lady of New York City, uh, Shirlane McKay, just recently declared New York City, uh, her city, uh, and mental health as her main priority. And almost immediately she realized that it isn't just one city, it's all the cities. And she invited all of the cities to come and join in a, a conference, uh, these, these programs um, 
to learn from each other, to have our joined voices um, magnified and heard on a national level. But New York has a lot more resources than a lot of the other cities. So it's so nice to be able to be in that group and learn from all the other cities. Um, they are sharing information. Uh, they have ways of uh, finding out what's happening on a governmental level with the mental health issues in our country. And also, they're preparing models uh, that they will share for free that are working in their city so that all the other cities can share in all of this. Um, so I hope year after year that um, Tarpon Springs will continue to sit at this really important table because joined in numbers, it really does make a difference. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I'm Robin Sanger. I'm the founding director of Peace for Tarpon. Uh, from time to time, I come and give y'all updates about what we're doing, and it's about that time again, so here we are. Uh, as you know, two years ago, we received a grant through the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the Health Federation, or the California Endowment that was administered by the Health Federation of Philadelphia. They gave Tarpon Springs, it was an invitation only grant, and of 24 communities across the United States that were invited to apply, Tarpon Springs was one of them, and only 14 communities were chosen to become part of this MARC, MARC Communities, which stands for Mobilizing Action for Resilient Communities. And Tarpon Springs was one of the 14. We're a very, very big, big league company. If you look at the map of the MARC Communities, it's a map of the United States, and you'll see Sonoma County, San Diego, the state of Alaska, the state of Wisconsin, the state of Illinois, Albany, New York, Philadelphia, Boston, and on the state of Florida, colored in in purple, it just says Tarpon Springs. Yay. So that's a really, it's a wonderful thing. It's a great way for us to, to really be known. And I tell you, we're, we're a little fish, but but we are very, very well known, which is wonderful. So our grant just ended, and we made a conscious decision when we received the grant that we wanted to keep two tracks going. So Peace for Tarpon wasn't going to be just about the grant. We wanted to keep the things that we already had in place and were planning kind of going along as well. So I want to share a couple of those updates with you. Two of the most exciting things that happened was uh, the University of Florida. University of Florida School of Public Health, Professor Dr. Mark Hart is a professor for public health communications. He teaches master's level classes at University of Florida. And for the past two semesters, the subject of his master's class has been Peace for Tarpon, which means that the students learn how to create active marketing campaigns for a real public health issue that are actually going to be used by the people that they're creating it for. So uh, our, the first class were 30 uh, master's level students. They created uh, social media accounts, infographics, um, PSAs, and different things. And this last semester was also Peace for Tarpon was the subject. And once again, we're the recipient of some fabulous, these students are just brilliant, some wonderful materials that they have been creating. University of Florida has also decided, because of Peace for Tarpon, to actually create a curricula for trauma-informed. And so those classes are being started. We've, we've been part of the syllabus uh, process, and that's a pretty big deal as well. St. Pete College, we're also partnering with them. They're wonderful community partners, but they also have now an online course through their corporate division of trauma-informed and resilient communities. So the colleges are actually creating courses inspired by Peace for Tarpon. That's something we can also be proud of. So a couple of things that happened just recently. One was uh, there are other communities that are interested in following our model. One of them is Orange County. Uh, I was invited to present to the Orange County Department of Health Community Health Improvement Board, which had elected officials from the county, from the city of Orlando, um, the Department of Health, just 
very jam-packed room full of really movers and shakers. So it's kind of cool that Orlando is now thinking of becoming Peace for Orlando. So here's the, my little PowerPoint part of this. Very nice, and thank you Judy Staley and Mark for helping me with this PowerPoint. It's not my strong suit, so I appreciate all the support that the city gives Peace for Tarpon. We've had the final, the reason that um, I could not, I really wanted to go to New York City and I was so happy that Mary could go, but the reason that I couldn't go to New York City to the Mayor's Thrive Conference was that was the same date that we had the final convening of the Mark Communities in Philadelphia. So that's where we were. That's Professor Hart to my right. There's me, Dr. Andrea Blanche, who presented to, before this board in 2010 when we first brought the idea of becoming a trauma-informed community to the city of Tarpon Springs. Denise Hughes-Conlin, who is with the Penella Sex Offender Reentry Coalition, and Wendy Sedlicek, who was our program manager for the MARC grant. That's Denise in front of a poster that we created. We used our symbol of the red mangrove, and of all the posters that were there from the other 13 communities, ours was the best looking. It was fabulous. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that, it really was. And here you see some of the other posters in the, in the, the presentation area. And there you see Wendy, the Red Mangrove also, the, the uh, Health Federation of Philadelphia also created a marketing piece using the Red Mangrove. It says the Red Mangrove is not only a metaphor of health and vibrancy, but an example of how a homegrown resilience movement can capture local assets and something else. <laughs> and then this is our most recent thing that we're very excited about, was since other communities are interested in following our model, um, after Peace for Tarpon started Gainesville, contacted us, they came to one of our monthly forums and asked if they could be peace for Gainesville. And we said yes, so they are now they're working with uh, University of Florida School of Medicine, University of Florida School of Law, residents, the River Phoenix Center for Peace Building, and many, many other uh, individuals and agencies in the city of Gainesville to become a trauma-informed, trauma-responsive, and resilient community. So Peace for Gainesville was second. Then Crawford County, Pennsylvania came to the table and said that they would like to be Peace for Crawford County. Crawford County is a big rural area in Pennsylvania, northern Pennsylvania. It has a couple of towns in it, maybe 15,000 people in a large rural area. They wanted to start out as Peace for, um, what is the name of their town? Meadville, Peace for Meadville, but then the rest of the county and some of the other cities caught wind of it and they said we want to be part of this too, so now it's Peace for Crawford County, Pennsylvania. This also kind of expanded our thinking as to what community means. Can it be a whole section of a state? Probably. And the next, Peace for the Big Bend. And this was also kind of startling. Uh, the Big Bend is the region in Tallahassee, eight county region, and, and it's actually a judicial circuit and um, they decided that they wanted to be peace for the Big Bend. This also kind of expanded my mind, how can a judicial circuit be a peace for community? But actually, I, when I asked them, they said, we, we are a community, that's how we think of ourselves. So as these other communities are coming on board, they each have a slightly different form, a slightly different way that they're moving forward, but we're joined by actually this peace for communities movement, which Tarpon Springs began. You see some of the folks who are there. We had <clears throat> the fellow with the khaki pants and the blue shirt and the uh, bo bottom right row is Zach Gibson. He's a gubernatorial appointee from Tallahassee. He worked for Governor Scott. He brought his staff with him. And um, one of the things that's interesting is Zach is now saying, the state of Florida has a model. Peace for Tarpon can be a model for the state of Florida. So at this gathering, one of the things that came out of it is, why not have a Peace for Florida? And we told Pennsylvania they, they could be second. After Peace for Florida, then they could be Peace for Pennsylvania once they grew their movement a little more. So, but we've had interest from uh, Palm Beach County, Port St. Lucie, Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, St. Petersburg, and all throughout Florida. So we can definitely see this creation of a Peace for Florida movement coming. We had uh, Judge Lynn Tepper, Circuit six court, six court Judge was there. Dr. Kevin Sharon, who's the director of the Orange County Department of Health was there. Um, you see our Commissioner Sieber there. And I think this is, yeah, everyone's giving the peace signs at this point. Um, 
and it was, it's like for, for an all day meeting, when you leave the meeting and everyone's more energized than when they started, that's what we call a really good indicator. So that's what this day was like. The energy was palpable, it was fantastic, and um, those are just a few of our updates. I don't wanna push the river. It looks like y'all have a lot of things to discuss tonight. And um, thank you so much for being a great partner. The city of Tarpon Springs is, is uh, is really we're lucky to have each other to be working together and uh commissioner carr look forward to speaking with you appreciate you reaching out to us too so we can share understanding any community member any audience member any of the commissioners anybody who's interested in learning more about peace for tarpon my office is a place called eco bean which is a coffee shop and um sometimes I can be found there, but if you give me a call, be happy to meet anybody there, talk to them about Peace for Tarpon, and see how you can get involved. What makes us different is that we're, our re we're resident involved. It's not just agencies and providers, and, and it's, it's residents that really are our, our juice. How many of y'all know about Peace for Tarpon? Raise your hand, this is just, yay! I felt good. All right, thank you so much for your time. Commissioner Siebert, thank you so much for inviting us to present. And you'll be seeing me around. Um, looking forward to our next update. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know what to do at this point. Should I just close it? <clears throat> thank you. Uh, I just, want to, I just want to thank you. I want to thank everyone on the uh, Peaceful Tarpon for the service that you're providing to our community. And Robin, especially, I want to thank you for uh, reaching out and helping the, uh, the youth in Tarpon Springs. It's, it's our great joy. We know that we have to really work with kids to stop generational violence. We have to make uh, the kids experience less trauma. We're working to do that. As a matter of fact, tomorrow night at the Shepherd Center, we're hosting a training with Suncoast. Um, Suncoast is a very large mental health provider in Pinellas County. We're hosting a training called SAFE from 5 to 7 p.m. At the, at the Shepherd Center. It's open to anyone in the community. And it's about how to keep children safe from sexual abuse. Um, what are the facts? What are the myths? And it seems that whenever we get a, give a presentation, sadly, there's something in the news that relates to that. And now we have Dr. Jerry Nasser and this whole Olympic thing that's come up. But this is a very real problem in our community. But if we don't start to reduce those things that happen to children, we'll never be able to create better futures for them. So that's just one small way. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Any uh, commission comment? Can I? Uh, oh, uh, Commissioner. I just wanted. That's I just wanted Robin to um, let everybody know you meet once a month. Is that? It? Yes, we we meet once a month. Sometimes we meet in the safety building. Um, for the foreseeable future, we're going to be meeting at the City Hall conference room on the second floor. It's the last Friday of the month. The meetings are open. Anybody's welcome to come and see who's at the table. Um, we don't speak in acronyms and we don't speak in PhDs and you're the masters this and that. It's, it's just we're all people. We're all in this together. It's a, it's a strong community focus. It's also very energizing. They're really great meetings. So hope to see some of y'all there. What time? It's from 9 to 10.30. So it'll be this Friday, actually, from 9 to 10.30. And um, I passed out to, Mary, did you pass the rest of those out? She has a couple extras. This is an article that appeared, very nice shout out. It's called Healthy and Vibrant, A Tree Goes in Tarpon. Because as you know, the city of Tarpon Street Springs declared the red mango of our official city tree as a symbol of resilience. And it's a People love that symbol so much. There's a nice shout out in here to uh, city manager Mark Lacouris and I think the mayor and some of, some of the other folks who are involved with us. So it's a great article and um, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions, comments I can answer? No, I just want to thank you again, and uh, I'm really happy that someone was able to re uh, represent Tarpon Springs in New York this year and that you went and uh, happy to partner with you guys. And, and I was excited to be at this conference. There was definitely a lot of energy there, and, and all these other piece for uh, cities that were there uh, on panels and, and speakers that were there. Um, and it is a movement. So it, you, you can sense it, it, couldn't you, Robin? Yeah. So, well, the city. Well, it's a, it's our city thing. It's our city thing. It's way beyond just. It's way beyond me. The superintendent of schools for um, Crawford County was there. He was a great, great participant. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really happy that you were able to go and experience that. And, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Are there any public comments on this item? Here now, thank you. We are now going to item number four, which is another presentation by uh, the public art committee. Yes, good evening to the commissioners and the mayor. I'm Sherry Orr, I'm chair of the public art committee. Uh, tonight, we'd like to do a couple of th items, uh, one of which is the annual plan and budget request for the coming year. Denise, um, did it go? Oh, it did. All right. Um, super. Um, some of the things that we have uh, contributed to, this is the plein air paint and photo. We contributed $1,500. Uh, we are doing plaques for our art, and this is the mermaid's plaque. A public art sampler, so when we have uh, folks coming into our community, if they don't want to donate money, but they want to create their own art, this will give them some ideas of things that have happened here. The Mother Mirrors Project, uh, as you know, we have modified that and it shows the descendants of Amelia Mears, um, and they sure look like they're enjoying the new uh, rendition. One of the things that, as a result of the AMA um, Mermaid Project was that part of that money had to be donated to uh, groups 501, and um, we had folks who'd write um, a grant to apply for these funds. This is the uh, Charity Quilters Group from the Unitarian Universalist Church here in Tarbon. They create all kinds of quilts for different groups and donate them. Uh, they now have a machine that they can really get busy. Um, the um, Tarbon Strings Art Association is in its fourth year working with the Boys and Girls Club. We work with 80 children once a month and talk about an artist, and we create art using the same media. The bike racks, phase one, I hope you've seen those um, around. We have 11 that have been designed. Uh, now this group, um, the artists did not fabricate the bike racks, they did do the designs. And it talks about five at the sponge docks, three in Craig Park, one at the Performing Arts Center, and one at the dog park. And here they are. Uh, there is one that is not in place at this point. We're still waiting for a safe location, uh, but that will be going up soon too. Um, we will be uh, talking about some more designs tonight. That's our next part of the presentation. Uh, and these bike racks will be for downtown. And so uh, here's a couple of options. Um, the cultural center and the train depot. The Nyads, last time we were here, thank you so much, you approved this. Uh, we have our Nyads, they're in town. We're going to be going out and getting designs for the roundabout so we can put them in place. Here we have storybook time, which will be uh, located next to the cultural center on the grass. And we have this one in Tarpon Springs waiting. So for the coming year, we'll be doing um, the roundabout base designs, the Nyads, we had that ready to go, and we're going to be going out and talking to landscape artists here in our city, our community. The city gateway signs, we're going to be looking for designs to redo the gateway signs. Uh, we're going to be creating a mural at 1 North Pinellas, and uh, there will be phase three of the bike racks. This will be the final phase, the last of the bike racks. These bike racks will accommodate 10 bikes. And so we're looking for them for the library, the fitness park, Sunset Beach, and then update our brochure. So to do this, this is our proposed budget. And um, 
We had the $1,500, which we're giving now for the paint and photo. Marketing promotion, $1,000. Artist plaques, each of the bike racks will have a plaque with the name of the artist and uh, the tarpon art uh, so that we have that recognition. There'll be a miscellaneous funds for things to come up that we're working with. Uh, the round base designs, and a lot of these are estimates that we're going to have to go out and see what we can get. Uh, phase two of the bike racks you're going to see tonight. Phase three, which will be the three large bike racks, uh, the mural, and the city gateway signs. There are seven of them that they want placed as people come into our city. So the total for the fiscal year would be $117,000, which would leave us $134,000 for the upcoming year. We want to thank you so much for your support, and we continue to look for projects and look for your ideas and appreciate the support that we're getting from you. Ms. Moore, thank you for the presentation. You're welcome. And I also want to thank all the members of the Public Art Committee. You guys do an excellent job. Thank, thank you. you for your work. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any uh, commission comments, Vice Mayor? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, as always, thank you for the work you and your, and your committee do. Thank you. I have zero art talent or taste for that <laughs> matter, so I depend upon you all for these things as, as, as you advise us. I've seen the, I've seen the, uh, all the bike racks around town. They, 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 uh, they look great. Uh, for next, for, I guess for this year, I guess, I, I'm, I'm most interested in, 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 in your gateway signs. I think that's very important. We haven't had proper ones done since I was a kid, I think. So um, I'm looking forward to that and seeing the, the different proposals that you have for that. And uh, just so people know, I mean, this is money that's um, placed there by developers. When you develop in Tarpon, um, to a certain extent, you, you pay part of a tax to, to this fund. So it's important that we use this money for displays of public art. And um, I would continue, though, to ask, I know we talked about it a year or two ago, is the, um, the tennis ball, the, I don't know if it's called racquetball, or the, the tennis ball court behind the old library with the big white wall. Mm -hmm. we can, if y'all can look into doing something like, like, like that before, I think we talked about that a, a, a year or two ago, but maybe start a plan for some of these blank canvases in town that need some, 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 something colorful on them. So, but thank you for, for all that you do, and I look forward to what you're going to have the, 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 this, the, this, this year. Thank you. Thank you. thank you. Commissioner Sieber. Yes, I also want to thank you. I echo uh, Vice Mayor Banther's uh, comments, and I'm looking forward to these projects coming up, uh, the roundabout and, and the new racks and, of course, the gateway project. So that has been a long time. So thank you all for all you do and uh, your time and service. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, I'm rather passionate about Tarpon Springs and passionate about uh, art projects, which I think you all know that. Uh, I visited uh, your committee once. Um, it's difficult for me to visit all the time because it meets during the day. Uh, but I just had a couple questions, if you could help me just understand clarification-wise. Uh, the art plaques, uh, I see like there's a picture, for instance, in the presentation that you presented. Is that what the plaque is going to look like, or is it going to be something that's a little more? That one plaque was for the uh, mermaid. Correct. But the other plaques, and we did not bring a picture of it, is simple. It's simply, uh, it has our logo, uh, the Public Art Committee on it. It has um, the artists that created the bike rack, and it has a little reminder not to climb on the bike racks. <laughs> Right. But it's very simple, and it'll be a little plaque that will be on the base of the bike racks. Okay. Are, are they metal? I just want to... They are stainless steel. Okay. That's what I wanted to confirm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then there is a part of your budget was the roundabout base design estimated $15,000. Is that the construction of the base, or is that just for the design phase? No, that is 15, all of it. Okay. So we really are going out. Uh, we're getting that information in the next two days, and we will be going, the members of the committee will be going out into the community looking for designs and proposals. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Commission Kickta. Thank you, and you know, I'd like to thank you all as well. You do such a great job and, um, in beautifying our community. So I, I, I um, echo what Vice Mayor said about the, um, the, 
Pat, well, the gateway signs, I would love to start seeing some ideas for that. Um, we really, uh, we could use some new, new signs at, at some of the gateways to our community. Um, so, and then public art is just, would be perfect for those areas. And then the uh, racquetball courts. Yeah, I think we talked about that a couple of years ago of doing some sort of, sort of mural on that or something. So, it, you know, if hopefully maybe we can look at that this coming year. Um, that would be that would be fabulous. I have a few ideas that I've been trying to talk to Mark about a little bit, but I will be sending some. I've been looking to different um, cities and and states actually, what they do for art. So I'm going to send some of those ideas to Mark, and maybe he can send them on to you. Just take a look at it, and you know, like I'm not an artist by any means. I couldn't even draw a straight a straight line if I if I could if I if I had to. So. Um, but I, so I, you know, I'll send what, some of the ideas that I had over to Mark, and he can pass them on to you guys and, and take a look. And I would appreciate that. And again, thank you for all your hard work. I do appreciate it. Thank you, and we welcome your ideas. Uh, the uh, practice ball wall for tennis, uh, that project is still out there. I, so we are still working with that concept, um, so that it has not been forgotten. Mayor, can I, I, I forgot to mention one thing too, and I know that um, a mural project is on here as well. And one thing I mentioned, I think you weren't at your meeting, I think you're out of town, was when I was there, I was looking at um, some type of grant that we could do for the business owners that, for instance, we don't, as a city, doesn't come through and pay for the whole mural project, but to say a business owner wants to do a mural project on their building and have a little bit more of a decision or they want to maybe put more money up for it or something along those lines. Uh, that would be a neat opportunity to see the city partner with some local businesses um, to encourage additional artwork on a lot of these larger buildings that we have that are just blank canvases. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be kind of a neat project to see as well in the coming years. Uh, not just the art committee taking it on, but also uh, um, partnering with our local businesses through a grant of some sort to encourage um, the businesses to do some more artistic items on their walls. And we would welcome that partnership. And we are looking into some grants for us as well. Uh, so all of those possibilities are out there. And so please send the ideas to us so we can find out more about them. Yep. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Thank you. You sure you have anything that you'd like to add? No, it's just that we welcome your ideas. Uh, you don't have to be an artist to have creative ideas. Um, and we're trying to, and we're talking about the gateway signs, um, our whole committee split up. And we've been studying gateway signs all over the United States to gather some ideas and uh, put those out there as um, generally ideas. And so it won't be long before you'll be seeing some of our concepts and we'll be looking for your feedback as well. So we have a lot on our plate, but we're looking forward to seeing it happen, the reality. Yes. Again, thank you for everything you guys do. Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Are there any public comments? You want to say something? Oh, I just want to see if they want to do a second part or. Can we do the next part oh, now? We also have another item on the agenda, which is item number uh, 20 to approve the, uh, the bike rack? What the plan was for them to do in presentation form, and then of course it's a vote item, so then it comes to the vote. Um, you can do it either way you want, but then the backup with the presentation. What we've done is heard the presentations before, and then you go to the actual vote, since that's something you have to vote on. You can do it now or later? It's just the backup, it's the second part of this presentation here. Sure. But you can do it any way you want. Vote on it now? Let's do that now, yeah. All right, so we will show you uh, phase two ideas and then um, consider what you want to do in making that decision. Uh, this is phase two of the bike racks. And um, originally, uh, we were going to build 10 bike racks and, uh, for $50,000. Uh, we were able to get 11 designs and fabricated for $24,882. And then we put those out around the city, but uh, looked for historic designs, uh, which would be paid for the balance of that $50,000. Uh, and then there'll be the additional three bike racks, which we'll come back to you about the library, the fitness park, and the Sunset Beach. 
So this is the second half of the first phase. All right, and this part uh, we may change. Uh, as far as selecting the designs and the installation sites, we'll look at item 20. But for now, I'd like to show you the designs that I'd like you to consider. And we will select, we'll ask you to select six designs from the eight that we have. Um, and the places that we have designated uh, are the Cultural Center, the Community Garden, two at the Train Depot, two at the small Tarpon Avenue parking lot, one near Tarpon Avenue, and one near Tarpon Tavern. Now, if you have another location that you say, hey, let's put one here, and it's not one of those, that's fine too. Uh, also, if you love one of our designs, and you'll say, well, let's just duplicate that design and use that design again. So here are the designs, and I understand that you do have a packet, so we'll go quickly. Uh, the conductor's watch, we're looking for some designs for the train depot. The luggage cart. Now these, the price is higher because these, we asked the artist to design them and fabricate them. So it's one shot. The steam locomotive. So those basically are train depot. And then some Victorian designs, this high wheeler bike. The parasol. Skeleton keys. Birds in flight. We were trying to consider something that might be good for the community garden. Victorian lace. And so um, there are currently a couple of uh, bike racks down at the other end of the train depot. And in fact, the other day when I was driving through, they were just jammed with bike. People are climbing over each other to get to their bikes. And then uh, these two areas, just by the uh, restrooms area, and then Tarpon Tavern in that parking lot area. The cultural center, maybe something down by the road, that's a pretty wide space. The community garden, one of the bike racks. So uh, these are eight designs, and I'd like you to consider six of these designs and the sites, but we're not going to talk about that now, if that's okay. We'll wait until item 20. Is that all right? So we already have you here. Maybe yes. you can guide us and we do the selection right now. Oh, we can do that. Okay, all right. So you don't have to wait. <laughs> okay. Well, you still have to vote on it. In the we, we vote on it, yeah. We can do that. All right, do you want me to go back to the beginning of the designs? Yeah, if or, you start from the You watch. have a sample of them. If you start with the uh, conductor's watch. All right. And then we... Uh, public comment? Get a play, or would we, huh? How does public comment work for something like this? I'm sorry? How does public comment work for an uh, item like this? first, and then we uh, get the public comment. Okay. All right, so... Um, remember, you have a choice of sites and you have a choice of bike racks. So one of the areas that we're looking for bike racks was by the train depot. There are three designs. The luggage cart and the steam locomotive. Can we hand, hand these into the art committee and then have them? You can do it several ways. You, you can vote. The, con here. the consent agenda item is to approve the project. You can, okay. you can decide now. You can decide later. Say you want to look at them more and decide later. You could you give a consensus. Again, you've asked the art committee when they do these things to bring it back to you for input. So you ne don't necessarily have to. You can still approve it in the 
in the special consent item in concept. And then if you want more time or thinking or more input, you can always do the actual, this one goes there at a later time. Um, we'll be looking in the agenda item again for the approval for it. But if you have them from looking at some ideas tonight, you can, or you can do it however you want. So can we it's your choice if you want to take some more time. Down? I mean, I, I have a list of what bike racks where. If, could we just give them the give list? Give them our of, list. Yeah, of what we're interested sort of in. Taking a, a tally of everybody. You could, but, yeah. I think that's but what just we did the thing last is you got to vote. You know, a tally doesn't mean the vote of, you know, when you get the consensus for the vote. So, yes, you can. But you actually have to have the vote, the official vote, uh, right. when you go to the other item. Okay, let's just, uh, uh, what's the consensus? to do it now or you want it to submit it later? Done. Huh? And we would accept an email uh, as well if you each wanted to give some thought to this and email us and let us know your locations and which bike rack you think should be in that location if that would be uh, a valid way of doing this. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, let's do that. Okay. All right, so do you want me to go through them or you, you have them in front of you? You already have it. Backup. We're all pretty right. much all set. Do we just need to approve all right. it? Well, we thank you for your support and uh, we look forward to seeing more art in Tarpon Springs. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any public comments of this item? Mike, Mike Cascuta, 623 East Tarpon Avenue. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I, like a Commissioner Banther, am, am far from being an artist as, as anybody, but I do enjoy the art this community has. A um, couple comments. You know, uh, Commissioner, you mentioned the mural art and doing a cooperation with business communities. When I was in Glasgow, um, every bare wall actually had a mural, it seemed. And, and there were just beautiful murals on, on, these, on the walls uh, or side of these buildings. So much so that it actually became a tourist attraction where people would go from building to building just to, just to take pictures and see the beautiful murals on the side of the building. It was just, just stunning. Um, but, but that's not why I wanted to come up and comment. Where as much as the entrance of Tarpon is important as inviting people into our community, um, some of the major thoroughfares coming into Tarpon, um, the, the properties themselves, and I know, you know we, there's so much you can do as far as code enforcement, et cetera, but some of the properties actually need to be more inviting into your entrance into Tarpon. You know, I, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that somebody's financial resources may not be there to keep their properties where they need to be, but some of them are actually institutional properties. I'll give you the example, the Verizon building, okay? I understand that, you know, there, there's nothing that's done exterior-wise to make that, and that's a gateway into our community, to make that inviting as people drive into our community. You could have beautiful entrance signs from 19 or even alternate 19, but once they get past the signs, what do they see? So, um, so I just, that's just, I'm throwing that out there, um, you know, the, to just, just to let you know that in addition to the beautiful art, inviting people to the community, we also want to look at enhancing our, our entrance points uh, into Tarpon Springs. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. No, don't, don't clap in place. No, we can't do that. Hey, we can't do this now. No, don't debate. Thank you very much. Any other public comments on this item? Oh, Ma'am, we asking for public comment. She's, no. she's, 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 she's lost out. You going? Okay. Okay. Just, just turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any other public comments on this item? No, thank you. We are now going to the uh, consent agenda. <clears throat> item number five satisfaction and release of liens. Number six is the attorney fees invoice. 55-514 special events is number seven. A, uh, five, 7A is Fine Arts Festival, March 24th and 25th, 2018. B is the Garden Club 
Flint sale, March 31st, 2018. Number eight is to reject all bid submitted for bid number 180049-B-JJ Great Park Seagull Restoration. Number nine is reject bid number 180052-B-RS Process Control Monitoring System. And number 10 is the award file number 180088 dash B dash RS single source purchase of uh, process control monitoring system. Number 11 is increase file number 170163 dash C dash RS technology solutions with related equipment and accessories through the uh, National Joint Powers Alliance contract number 100614. Number 12 is increase file number 170123CCM Euro, Euralized and National Joint Powers Alliance Control number 121715, flooring with related equipment products, supplies, and installation services. Number 10 is retrofit equipment with uh, International Association of Firefighters Local 4966. Number 14 is to approve job description for paramedic driver engineer. Number 15 is author, uh, authorized execution of a memorandum, well, excuse me, memor, uh, memorandum of an agreement regarding Evergreen uh, notification system. Are there any items that you'd like to pull? I just have a question, I'm sorry. Um, not pull, I just wanna make a comment on item number 13. Number 13, a comment, uh, did you say? I just had a question also for clarification on item number nine. I don't need to pull it there. Well, you want to go first since it's number nine? Sure. Um, it, the recommendation is to um, deny the bids. And I just wanted to know it because this pertained to the wastewater treatment plant and its monitoring system. I just want to know what the next step is. Uh, I know the bids came in overestimated. Um, so I. Just what's the next step to make sure we get this product and continue to our award right that we got tonight represented yes thank you uh paul smith public services director so item number nine originally we were going to go single source and another vendor when we advertised our intent to do that said i can also do it through the bid process it was discovered they actually couldn't meet our requirements so so number 10 to answer your question is the follow-on step okay. we went back to the drawing board found out what we needed most critically and we've got that in front of you tonight on number 10. perfect thank you thank you number 13 you have a question or comment uh, i just wanted to comment and um fire chief is here i just wanted to congratulate the firefighters and the union for coming to an agreement we've ratified the contract and um everybody's happy it, it was uh it took some time to come to an agreement. They had many meetings, um, but they, they finally all agreed, come together, and uh, thank you for all your hard work, and please thank every, you know, everybody for us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other comments? I'd like to pull number 18. Number 18? Number 18. Number 18. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not here tonight. <laughs> Five to fifteen. Yes. You okay. I'm good. Okay, good. Motion. Are there any public comments on these items? Here, none. Uh, you contain the motion. Approve. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr. Yes. Commissioner Kikta. Yes. Commissioner Siebert. Yes. Vice Mayor Banther. Yes. Marilyn, who's this? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> we are now going to the uh, special consent agenda. Item number 16 is request to settle administrative fine. or we'll lean for uh, 316 Mr. Boyer. The C attorney will present this item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioners, you've received Tom Chass's memo dated January 31 of 2018 regarding the property at 316 East Boyer. Um, as of January 18, 2018, you have a principal due of 38,415. 24 cents. Uh, we've been negotiating a settlement um, in order to avoid litigation at 22,214. And uh, would you recommend that that uh, amount be adopted by the board? Vice Mayor Panther. 
Yes, when you when you feel um that it that it's over, I know someone in the audience wanted wanted to speak to that I know that we allow that. I will ask for public comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any comments to you? No, not, 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 not yet. Any uh, commission comment? Recommendations, Commission Carr. Um, I, I think everyone knows pretty clearly that I've um, I find these to be interesting situations. Uh, we've got two other applications on this um, agenda as well that are in similar situations. Uh, I don't understand how we determine. I mean, do we just wait for the applicant to make a suggestion that we offer X amount of dollars and then at that point we negotiate or Mr. Attorney, or is it, where, where do we go from that? Because I'm looking at this and there's a 42% reduction off what the fine amount is, but then the other ones that we're looking at are 78% off the fines. So I'm just trying to understand a uh, clarification, I suppose. Yeah, I appreciate your question. Uh, this particular one is a little bit different from the other two. The other two on Gainesway and Tukes are proceeding under a policy that you all have adopted, this board adopted at some point in the past, I think it was in the 2008 range. Uh, that policy was largely in response, adopted in response to uh, foreclosures and properties falling into disrepair, et cetera. That's what we've been proceeding under for a while. Uh, that policy accepts certain types of circumstances which covers the one that you're reviewing right now, which is number 16. Uh, this one uh, went through Tom Trask because it, uh, it was a straight negotiation uh, to avoid litigation. So that's a little bit of a different factual scenario than the other two. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Please come forward, state your name and your address for the record. And to further answer your question, when they, when they fall into the other two, um, there's an application made through my office, and then the, the information is gathered and presented to you with a recommendation. Okay. Julie Holt, 38868 U.S. Highway 19 North Tarpon Springs. I am not the owner of the property. I'm the person that's lucky enough to be the person that helps translate for the owners of the property. This gentleman is the property manager. My name is Rami Nasif. Um, I'm with Infinity Realty. I'm the current property manager for that property that was acquired um, on February 2017 up till today. The main reason that I am here is the owners of the property are quite concerned that there is a perception that they are not good property owners. They inherited a property that was in disgusting condition. They purchased it. They did due diligence. We ordered a Tarpon Springs assessment search, which showed no code enforcement issues, no recorded code enforcement violations. Since the day they got it, they have been working to improve the property. They put in place a live-in person who would check on it every day. They have cleaned the property. They have fenced the property. They have painted the property. They have removed, I guess you would call them tenants, that they inherited. They have worked diligently hand-in-hand -hand with the police department. They are concerned that they are perceived as slum landlords. I have assured them that that is not the case. But for some reason, they feel that maybe they would have been treated differently by the city of Tarpon Springs if they were from Tarpon Springs, or even worse, the statement to me, Greek. I have assured them that that is not a problem in Tarpon Springs. They are ready to invest a lot of money into rundown buildings in Tarpon Springs. But now they are hesitating because they feel that maybe they would not be welcome. The reason we asked for a reduction in the cost of this fine was three or fourfold. We were being fined so much a day while the eviction process went through the court system, something we had no control over. We evicted one tenant, only to be told later by gas, and it was the wrong tenant that he really meant the other tenant. So we've had issues, but every time the city of Tarpon Springs code enforcement has come to the people, they have immediately reacted 
in a positive, pro-city stance. We are asking for a reduction because they inherited problems and they have worked diligently to improve the property. And the commissioner is correct. Some people's fines get reduced 78%. The only thing they removed from ours was a portion of the fine while the eviction process went through the court system, something we had no control over, and then we were visited by a hurricane that delayed us even further. Your consideration in this matter would be deeply appreciated by the owners. They're just looking for validation of what they have been doing is correct. I will turn you over to Rami. He promises to speak slowly and clearly. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I just want you to make sure you understand that uh, a person's nationality has nothing to do with our decision here tonight. I have reassured him that okay, thank you so a much. lot of times. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I've been into this room actually a couple times, and unfortunately, um, when the owner had received the paperwork that there is an issue at that particular property with a couple of the tenants, the paperwork they had received, it did not really show what do we need to do to cure the problem. It stated there is a problem there that a couple of the tenants are not, they're not supposed to in that neighborhood. Um, it didn't give us a clear direction what do we need to do to get those tenants out of there at that time, which was March of 2017. That's less than 30 days after purchasing this property. Um, I worked on a normal realtor or property manager standard of going to those tenants, although it was a very dangerous situation for me. Um, and I started receiving a lot of threats. Um, I end contacting, obviously, the sheriff's office, giving them a full authority to trust pass and arrest any person on that property does not belong or have a valid lease in there. We didn't know the tenant deeply, obviously, the first 30 to 60 days into the process. Um, I was threatening too many times, don't go there, don't come here, you do not know who you're missing with. And after I did some research, I found out that this problem actually has been existing in that particular block or that particular neighborhood for years back. It's, you know, this family's been there for God knows how long, but they were doing very bad activities. Um, at that point, I got the clear directions from the property owner that does not live in the state to do everything I possibly can do to get those tenants out of there. Um, contacted code enforcement, contacted Mr. Gaston, obviously, because we're aware that we need to do something. It's just I wasn't 100% sure what do I need to do on the paperwork. Didn't specify, get this tenant out. No, this tenant is ready to get that tenant out too. Uh, therefore, I had to hire an outside servicer to protect my identity and to protect that I'm the guy that's going there and telling those people, you need to go. And it took quite some time for them to get into the proper paperwork. Unfortunately, we didn't know that we have a time frame of two weeks to file this eviction till two and a half months later. So through the phone calls that's been logged on, on all the county records, yeah, you need to work with the city, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we understand that you're cleaning the property. We're so happy that you're painting the property. We're glad that there is a new owner in place that's, you know, fixing the problem. I was never once told, but remember, you have two weeks to get those tenants out of there. It's even on a normal day, it's very unrealistic to evict a tenant within two weeks of an order. So we've been fined for about three months without even knowing really what do we need to do except getting them out. We weren't aware of the time frame. We, we weren't given clear directions that I need both of them out. All my email trail between me and, and code enforcement, it's just like, what else do you want me to do? Oh, go do this also. Um, it just happened that we got another violation in the month of July that I brought in the handyman person that we had put into that property, came to the city hall, that violation was cured right when we got the letter. So when we came for the hearing, it was already clear that morning, within less than a week. And that's when I was told, remember, you are being fined $250 a day because you haven't filed eviction. Like, I, we weren't aware of that. 
you know, there's seven or eight times that we have called, we weren't told that we're being fined. We were told, clean the property, get the bad tenant out of there. So obviously, immediately we took the actions, got hit with Hurricane Irma. Pinellas County Court obviously was backed up and it took good five to six weeks, I believe, to get the final position that we end getting, you know, some help from the sheriff's office to protect me to go take Police. position of those properties. Police department. Yeah, I'm sorry, police department. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, you finished. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other public comments on this item? You hear none? I need a motion. Before you, before you move on, I want to make clear to the board that uh, this is a negotiated settlement between Attorney Trask and the property owner and the property owner's representative. I had no, all the, the information you just received is water under the bridge, so to speak. That my, my office has been negotiating with the property owner. This is the amount that was mutually arrived at. Uh, we didn't recommend this. This was what was determined between them. So they agreed to settle for this amount? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, I also like to, uh, we need to revisit this process as well. We need to take a look at that. I agree with every fiber of my being, sir. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I need a motion. Motion, motion to, uh, to accept the offer from the owner in the amount of 22,000 to, to, to 14. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahousis? Yes, thank you. We are now going to the item number 17, is to request the several uh, administrative fine and liens at the, uh, for the 9,000, excuse me, 905 Gainesville, uh, Gainesway Drive. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you mentioned, uh, property at 905 Gainesway Drive, you received my recommendation and report. Uh, these are fines dating back to 2014. We have a principal amount of just shy of 27000 which does include a $3,651.74 utility lien, which we are not at liberty to negotiate. So you're negotiating a principal amount of 23192 Property owner has offered 1000 to settle. I've recommended 1800 in principal, 325 in administrative costs, and $3,651.74 with, with the utility lien. Uh, for a total of $5,776.74. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Any commission comments? I'll keep it going, um, if that's all right, Mayor. Um, just a quick question. You mentioned, Mayor, during the last meeting when I brought up issues with some of these liens being removed for institutional purposes of like a bank or a federal credit union or something along those lines. And you said the goal of the code enforcement is to get the properties back within the code and in line and i just want to make sure that's was that i heard that correct um mr attorney and is that ultimately what our goal is here is to get the properties back to be uh i guess normal compliant i uh, think that is the the broad goal of code enforcement in general yes <laughs> I, I think that it has unfortunately only loose correlation to this particular process but i think that's the uh the goal of chapter 162. Okay. I just want to make another uh, question because I've been on the board for almost a year and I've been bringing these up for almost a year. So, and the mayor brought it up a second time tonight is that this is something that we need to readdress as a board um, because it's putting us in an awkward situation, I think, overall. Um, and I like to go off your recommendations, but sometimes it, it's tough for us as commissioners um, to make these decisions. So I don't know if we can direct the city manager during this time or if this is another time to, who, who we need to direct, because we've been talking about it for a while being an issue, um, of what needs to go back to the drawing board so it, it, this is less, uh, just. Yes, we can do I, that. I'm not sure. <laughs> you gotta remember for the longest time that we've been doing this and this board has been doing it, you, you weigh the circumstances the case, you weigh what the effect of this property being like it was had on the neighbors and the neighborhood during the time. You weigh in what is the cooperation or non-cooperation. You go in, um, you look at all, you wanna get it back, but if you keep having people run up fifty, hundred thousand dollars fines and then do it for cost, it's not. So it's a fine line and it's a tough process. We've, we've, we've talked about it several times. Um, 
how do you how do you get because the situations are so different of what you do and what we've got to try to come up with is some you know the formula you know what is the range of formula and we have, we have had conversations to talk about that and bring that back right now it's just weighing all the circumstances and the city attorney with input from because you see there's there's it, when you're reading the cases, code enforcement puts in, we, you know, we recommend not a reduction or, or they talk about, it. again, you weigh all those circumstances. But we, ha we have been talking to the city attorney. We'll continue talking to try to bring you uh, a little bit of better process. But you have to remember, it's still going to be there are a lot of factors that you have to weigh. And each of these cases are so much different. To come to that fine line is, is not something we can do overnight. But we will be working on that to bring something back to you on this. We've already begun the discussions on that, on, on how we do that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any comments on uh, on this item, though? So on this situation, uh, it, this individual lived up north. Uh, I believe the person that wrote in was the daughter of the mother and may have passed away. Am I right in saying that? Yeah. Um, un narrative. Couldn't contact them uh, due to a bad address, so they didn't know that the property was in disarray. Uh, to me, I think if you have the responsibility as a property owner to keep your properties up kept, um, so to me the fine's light. I think it, we should we shouldn't reduce so much of the fine for this property owner. Yeah, I, if it's important to you at all, I have no. Uh, I take no personal uh, ownership of of the. I mean, not ownership, but I. Yeah, it doesn't hurt my feelings if you don't go with my recommendation. These things are, they're not scientific to begin with. Uh, it's a bit of an amorphous process with standards that are not entirely. Uh, you know, set in stone, and they're subject to so many factors, it's difficult really to come up with a recommendation at all because, really, at the end of the day, no two cases are actually alike. I mean, you have some with some similar facts, but they, they kind of stand on their own in terms of the violation at issue, the efforts of the uh, owner or, or the predecessor to address those issues, uh, the financial circumstances at issue. I mean, there's just so much that goes into it. So, you, you know, to the extent that the recommendations are, are inconsistent i certainly own that but they're inconsistent because the facts are not the same in all of them so i i, I yeah. have no yeah. this is y'all's decision you do what you feel is the right thing to do yeah. certainly I, i'm sure when you come up with the uh new except process, for the non-negotiable part yeah yeah when you come up with the uh the process i'm sure you're gonna have some kind of a criteria that we can actually work with well you know in looking through my file on this uh and and I think I've said this before. I, I talk to Yakovone periodically, and every time I talk to him, I say, you know, hope your family's well, and thanks again for this policy. It's really hard to, it's really hard to administer. Uh, but my file shows that in 2012, he came to the board and suggested several alternatives to, to amend the policy, one of which was to take you all out of it altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, that didn't pass, right? <laughs> so I'm certainly going to give you rec a recommendation from me that takes you out of this process, because I think... My legal opinion is that it's bad for you guys to be involved in this process as a board. Um, I think this is I think this is and should be an administrative policy and function. Um, but certainly, I'll give you options as to uh, what you can and can't do. Okay. But okay. I, but but I was in seeing that in the file. My my very strong feeling has, and I certainly haven't minced words up here over the years saying that this policy is it's uh, I just hate it. Any idea how long, any idea how long it will take you to come up with that? Uh, Not very long. Work? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. A couple of months. A couple of months? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Do we have any other comments? Are there any public comments on this item? Here, none. I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call, please. What, part, what, we're approving the recommendation. What, what are you approving? Uh, the sorry. recommendation of the. Thank you. Yeah. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? No. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahu, is this? Yes. And now going to the item number 18. This is another request to settle administrative fine on lien for uh, 1147 <coughs> Tooks Road. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, 1147 Tooks Road. You've seen my report. We have violations dating in 16 and 17 on a property owned by uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Uh, we have principal amount of about 32000 plus 675 and 31 cents in the non-negotiable utility lien. Uh, the facts are we had some violations that we felt uh, 
imposed some life safety conditions at the property. They were remediated in late 2016, but reoccurred in 2017. The property ultimately needed to be and was demolished. Uh, the code enforcement department, I do wish to point out, uh, feels strongly about this case that no reduction should be offered by the board uh, based on the bank's uh, dilatory conduct in addressing these violations and their uh, s speed or lack thereof in reacting to them and getting the property and keeping the property in compliance. Uh, I have recommended $7,023.31. That includes $5,800 in principal, $548 in administrative costs, and $675.31 in the non-negotiable uh, utility lien. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Any commission comments, question? Any public comment? Hear none. I will entertain a motion. Motion to accept the, uh, the recommendation from, from the attorney. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? No. Commissioner Kickta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? No. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alhuses? Yes. Thank you. We're now going to the item number 19. It's to authorize city manager to execute a grant application for a wastewater treatment plan. Mr. LeCourse, you want to do the staff report? Yeah, I'll let Mr. Smith uh, tell you about this opportunity and this grant that they've come up with talking about tonight. Thank you, Paul Smith, Public Services Director. This is something the city manager looks for us to do, which is look for grant opportunities. Um, this helps us stretch our budgets further. Um, this particular grant we're asking your authorization tonight for the city manager to sign involves a state grant for cleaning our wastewater treatment plant basins. What's good about this is this is a planned activity that we would have already done. So this is really um, a way to leverage our dollars further. And um, the grant amount is $37,125. It's a reimbursable type grant with um, up to 50% matching funds. So this is something we've already put in the budget for this year. And this grant is just uh, an ability for us to do more work for the same amount of money. So with that, uh, we request your authorization. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Smith, I think it's a great opportunity for us to uh, receive $37,000 to do this maintenance. How often do we clean our tank? Is that it's a yearly, really on a, uh, routine maintenance? It's on an as-needed basis. Uh, about every five years is a rough average. Thank you. Any public comment? Any question? Any commission comment? Are there any public comments on this item? Here are none. And I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Siebert? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahusis? Yes, thank you. Mr. Smith, thank you. Thank you. Item number 20 is the uh, is to approve the uh, the bike rack installation, page two. Uh, this is related to the item, to the presentation that we had earlier from the uh, public art committee. Yes, and what I'd like you to do is actually approve, and then if you have your sheets, either that or email me, I'll get, I'll get them to the art committee and we'll move forward with the project. Okay. Any other comments? Any commission comments on that? Thank you. Any public comments on this item? You have none? I need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahousis? Yes, thank you. Now we're going to the item number 21 is to approve revised property sale agreement with Union Academy Dobbs Acres Properties. Mr. Licurus. You've seen this just recently um, where you approved. This is the land we're talking about um, between North Avenue and Distin as you enter the Union Academy neighborhood from LLK. As you knew the last time you saw it, it was agreement for us to purchase this land and then sell a portion of the land because our property line is right up against the people's house. So as an exchange, what we found out after you approved it was that we could not get clear title to it because of an old um, child payment lien that goes with the property, so it doesn't go away. So therefore, the city you know can't purchase properties that you can't get a clear title on. So we went back. Um, again, the property owner needs that land. So what we agreed to was to sell that land as we had done before. We did it. We were able to add a couple more feet to it. We had 13 feet. 
Um, in exchange for that, they'd give us a 30-year municipal easement to utilize the land for the same purpose we can do as an entranceway feature of landscaping, maybe a sign entering the Union Academy neighborhood um, at no cost to us. So, so we save the 5000 a purchase price. We get to use the land for beautification on our entranceways to the Union Academy neighborhood. They get the relief from the, from the property line being up against their house, and everybody is happy. It's just the revised of what you see because of that lien that does not leave. It was about a $35,000 child support lien that does not leave the property, and we didn't want to take possession of that. So this is the alternative to get where we wanted to go. Uh, on it, so I'd ask you to approve that tonight, so we can go forward with that. So the clear, this is a win-win situation. The owner is going to uh, uh, resolve the issue that it has with the court enforcement. It's going to the fifty hundred bucks, but also will give us the property for thirty years. Yes. The question that I have, maybe the city attorney, can the buyer at some point change his mind and ask for the property back? No, for the, the thirty years. The easement is not is not granted yeah. that way. Okay, thank you. Any commission comments, questions? Any public comments on this item? Hear none. I need a motion. Motion approved. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lizis? Yes. We are now going to the item number 22, which is the owner's 2018 05 Heritage Museum History Win in honor of George Belairs. Mr. City Attorney, if you read the ordinance. Ordinance number 2018-05, an ordinance of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, naming a wing at the Heritage Museum building located at 100 Beekman Lane in honor of George Michael Belier as providing for modification that may arise at public hearing and providing for an effective date. It's first reading of ordinance 2018-05 by title only. Second reading to be held on March 20, 2018 and will be published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on March 2, 2018. Mr. LeCourt, if you want to give us... Uh Yes. Your staff report, and then I go to the public comment. Yes. Um, we had a meeting to discuss this item. Um, uh, previously, what my job as a city manager to take, what I saw from the consensus of that meeting, and bring it back forward. Obviously, because this is the naming of a building, there's the ordinance process. So we put the ordinance back on as read. Um, what I told you in it from that meeting is, and I've given you examples of, uh, this to prove the, the ordinance of the naming. Uh, the naming is going to be on the, the wing where you go into the right of the Heritage Museum, go into the big hall where the banquets, and then there's another where all the history is. Um, as you see on the examples, I put some examples of what the sign would be from the ordinance. Um, Commissioner Banther had sent me about in honor of the sponge. So when you see the signs on the sponge, that's something sent from a commissioner. But there's examples of the signs for the naming of there. Um, also, the big discussion at that meeting was what do we do about the others, the founders, the divers and stuff. And what I'm telling you in this memo going forward and to prove it that I will ask um, Diane Woods and Tina Bucavallis to look at the inside of that for the room where the history is, to look at some kind of, of either names on a wall or something that, that we can honor all the families of the sponge industry from founders to divers and, and have a memorial within there on that. And so it's kind of twofold along with, with the ordinance, um, again, from all the conversation from the last way and to, to try to come to a point where we can make everybody you know, happy in this thing, you know, we get the portion of naming after George Belarus, again, for his promote for the many, many years of promotion and being the face of the, of the sponge industry and every media outlet. And, you know, you didn't have the social media like you did before, but every media outlet that was available, he was there. And then within that museum of there to honor um, the families, the founders, or how we want to do it, we got a lot of room in that museum. I want to remind everybody, we got a lot of room now as we approved finishing up those last sidewalks from the docks to the Heritage Museum. Now we've got our walking circle. We have got along the walking area from downtown Safford to the docks. We have got areas where we can honor everybody that was involved in the history, the culture, and art. We have got so many places as we finish up the last phase of the 10-year process to honor um, to do more honoring of, for instance, at the docks, you know, the founders of Sponge. So we have got a limited, limited area, and we'll be working next five years. We'll be working with the art committee. We'll be working with the historical side, everybody, so that 
when people, like again, I was out last weekend at, at the Riverwalk in Tampa, like they are honoring, honoring people that were founders or people in Tampa, honoring not only culture, honoring people, art, all along that way. So there's plenty of places where, where our history and stuff needs to be known to the people who come to our town. And uh, again, after a 10-year process that, you know, former Mayor Archie, Mayor DiDonato, all the people who started this and this walking process, now it's our job to fill it with all the cultural history um, of this town um, in our next phase as we go to the project. So I think we can do a good job at honoring everybody this way. And the first step I'm telling you tonight is about the naming of the museum, the wing of the museum for ordinance purposes, and then what we'll do for the rest as we go on in that building and then we expand and doing the walk and culture history trail. Thank you. We're going to go to public comments. Are there any public comments on this page? Mike, Mike Cascuda, 623 East Harpin Avenue. <clears throat> I'm, I'm here uh, in support of not necessarily, uh, not necessarily honoring George Blurris, but recognizing George Blurris uh, and recognizing him a little bit differently um, by putting his name on, on, on a wing. You know, a lot of people really don't know a lot of the history of, of the sponge diver. Uh, it was probably the, one of the most dangerous jobs that there was. Uh, Sponge boats, at least in Greece, used to go with multiple divers, knowing that half of them probably wouldn't come back. My great-grandfather uh, died off the coast of Africa sponging. So, you know, my family has a rich history of sponging. You know, here in Tarpon Springs, you know, Leon Volusius at 14 was the first hard hat diver, the youngest hard hat diver at the age of 14. Um, John the Greek was probably the best hard hat diver in Tarpon Springs. Those things can be debated. Um, what I don't think can be debated is the recognition that um, this town, the history or the rich history of the culture, the, the divers, what, uh, what attracted you know, somebody living in Chicago, New York, California, to come here and see what is this sponge industry? Why, are the, why did the Greeks migrate here? They were hard, the, the, the industry, they were hardworking people. They were too busy trying to feed their families and trying to, that promoting Tarpon Springs. George promoted Tarpon Springs. And so when I look at, I don't look at honoring George, I'm looking at recognizing George. And by naming a wing, you're recognizing George Blairis. Who you honor are the people inside that room. So again, um, I'm here to support the uh, city moving forward in naming the that particular the uh, building or room the uh, George Blairs. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Nick Zambellis, four eighty five Riverside Drive. I appreciate Mike's uh, comments, and they mean a lot because outside, you know, we, we're, we're childhood friends, and so we go back, and when he was outside, we had a chance to talk about it, and it was good because it enlightened me. I hope I enlightened him a little bit, and it actually was a little bit of a history summary, and I think everyone here has good intentions with regards to that. I respect and admire Mr. Belairs. I still I call him Mr. Belairs because to me I had that kind of respect for him because he did contribute a lot to the industry. He contributed a lot to making Tarpon Springs aware. But at the same time I feel that there are others. I mean I know when you know when I started and I read this topic, I said, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a history lesson myself. And I went on, I I went to the Google, I went to Bing, I did so many terms and phrases, and I got a good history lesson. And I can tell you from the history lesson, I learned a lot about the John Kukurus, the John Cheney. I learned about different ethnic groups that were involved in the development and the culture of sponging that were non-Greeks, different colors of, of, of skin. And I was impressed by that, and that made me feel convicted to say, well, I understand and recognize the importance of recognizing someone such as Mr. Belirus. 
I also feel that it's important to recognize and honor those as well that contributed both in the past, in the present, and also leave the door open for the future. Um, I place a lot of value in the history of our Tarpon Springs, and I use an analogy with Mike outside. Is so, Mike, look along the wall. We got every picture of every mayor in Tarpon Springs, and we are you're honoring and paying tribute to every mayor, but you're not naming one part of a building after one mayor. Um, I also said to Mike, you know, Mike, let's talk about the sports arena. The sports arena, we have the Hall of Fame. And every year the Hall of Fame nominates individuals to go into that Hall of Fame, but they don't just pick one and say this is a Hall of Fame for one person. Mr. Belirus deserves to be in that Hall of Fame. I think there are others that deserve to be in that Hall of Fame. I understand what you're saying, name it after one individual, um, but I also feel that when you name it after one individual, then you're really basically giving one individual the Hall of Fame, and then you're going to honor the secondary level, both past and present in the interior. So that's, that's my words. Thank you. Do anybody use this? <laughs> I don't see any names on the outside. I guess I'll be first. So. You know, I, I I was back there. I was thinking it's the the irony of this situation. You know, uh, I think that you know too many times uh, we look for opportunities to divide each other instead of looking at this opportunity to unite. Uh, nobody's going to dismiss what Mr. Belirus has done. Long before I ever ran for office, Mr. Belirus was advocating for the sponge docks, bringing Greek divers on. We're sitting at St. Pete College with the University of South Florida looking at opportunities to do that. It's always been an ambassador for the sponge industry. And now we look at this as uh, an opportunity to say who's better, this one or this one. And I like uh, Nick's analogy. Maybe they can have a room upstairs with my name on it. Like, like, <laughs> like somebody's going to come in City Hall and remember that somebody's name was on a room. And basically, this is all it is. You know, there is this misinformation that the whole Heritage Museum is going to be named after Mr. Belirus, which is not true. You have to go inside the building to even know that anything in the building, they say it's a wing, I call it a room, but it's just an opportunity to do something for a man who deserves it. But I said to myself, even in his death, he's advocating for Tarpon. Many, many people have talked about the history of Tarpon that sometimes is hidden. The founders, people that have done all of these great things, who has Greek heritage. Now it comes to light. It's an opportunity to maybe to write that history and put it inside the room. Yeah, they might think, oh, it's the George Belirus room or wing or whatever. But after that, they go in and find out more about what's happening about Tarpon. What is the history of Tarpon? And if we use that as an opportunity to come together instead of an opportunity to say who is first, this one is better than this one, is this one, and this one. George to me is just a symbol of what's good about Tarpon. He advocated, he was an ambassador for the city of Tarpon. You know, I had a chance, I had a little sponge dive on my desk. A young man said, What's that? I started telling him about the sponge industry. So, you know, we all go to YouTube. So I go to YouTube, I put in sponging, a video comes up. Guess who's on the video? George Belirus talking about the sponge industry. So, without a doubt, the man deserves this honor. I don't even know if it's due recognition because, like I say, it's only a wing. We act like it's naming the Craig Park. We took Craig Park and we called it George Belirus Park. And, and it, most people don't even think about that as being the Heritage Museum. They still call it the library. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, sometimes 
instead of looking at this as an opportunity to divide, let's look at an opportunity to unite. Let's take all of the history that people have talked about. Let's catalog that. Let's put it in that room so others can know about what has happened here in Tarpon. Does that bring less of an honor to them? No. The funny thing is, if this didn't come up, and I just thank Commissioner Bantha for, I know right now he's not really uh, thinking this maybe was the greatest idea, but to even bring it up, because without that, these same people that everybody's advocating, who's done so much for Tarpon, nobody would know anything about. Now it's an opportunity to recognize those people. That doesn't diminish anything that they've done. It doesn't diminish anything that Joy's done. It's just an opportunity to give due recognition to someone who deserves it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Beverly Belairs, 1028 Peninsula Avenue, Tarpon Springs. Um, thank you, Mayor, for your comments, and Mike, and thank you, Commissioner Banner, and the commissioners as well. Um, when this was brought up, I didn't know that it was going to be such a controversy. Um, you all know my husband, and knew my husband, I'm still in the wrong tense there, but I think he would be embarrassed at this point um, that there is such a controversy or even shy about the fact that it was even brought up to do, and that was George. But he has done so much, and it's not about, and, and I've listened to some people talk in Tarpon Springs to me about this, and it, what, it's not about him in the sponge industry, and it's not about dishonoring anyone that has been in the industry and the divers and the people that came here years before him. He was the one that was honoring them this whole time. When he's on the TV and he's in school books and he's in magazines and he's done 44 documentaries, he's talking about those people. He's not talking about me, I did this. He's talking about the people that had done it before him. He has constantly honored them. So this, and, and, and Commissioner Banther, or Vice Mayor Banther, it's not about um, dishonoring any other sponge diver. It's actually honoring them once again. And I, no matter what your outcome is to this evening, I wanna thank, thank you all very much for remembering George in this way. I know the county honored him in, as well. Um, I was, it was, would be nice if our own city did it as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Commissioners, audience, um, I'm Frank DiDonato. Um, Proud to be a Tarpon person. I consider him a Tarpon person. I've been here 41 years of my life. Um, came here when I was two, I think. No, it's a little longer ago than that. One of the first people I met to tell me about Tarpon Springs was George Belurus. One of the first people that really not just tell me, but set me down and got my attention about how important sponge diving was and the sponge industry was to Tarpon Springs was George Belurus. And George never talked about what he did and how valuable he was to that industry. He talked about, as, as, as has been said, he talked about all of the sponge divers of Tarpon Springs. But George went way beyond that. Some of you may know, some of you do not know. As, as we just brought out, the county ordered George quite some time ago. And they didn't honor him as a sponge diver. They honored him as the man who loved Tarpon Springs. That man took time out of his businesses and went down county and met with the tourist development people and made sure that Tarpon was always included, the sponge docks were always included, and Tarpon was the place to come to see. They made sure the county 
would do that, and not only did he do it such a good job, the county years ago designated five major tourist attractions in Pinellas County. And we are one of them because of George Belares and Charlie Phillips, by the way, I want to give him a plug. He put some time into this as well. But if George Belares hadn't taken the time out of his own personal life and gone down and, and worked with the county in developing tourism, tourism, not just the sponge industry, although that was the first thing he would talk about because he knew how vital it was to our community to preserve it. He knew how vital it was to Pinellas County to preserve the sponge diver industry. And again, as has been already said, I don't want to repeat anything, but it, it shouldn't be a division. It should be a coming together and a rejoicing. And George, there is no question that man deserves recognition above, above many. I don't know of anybody else in my 41 years here that has ever put in the time and devotion and the love to this community and be involved in, in, in the political process just to see that it got done than George Pelleris. So I hope for that reason you will pass this motion. Thank you. Any other public comments on this item? Any other public comments on this item? Hear none? Okay. The, uh, we are now going to have a discussion <coughs> here. Well, I endorse all the comments made by uh, the Belairs family <coughs> and the public and all the former mayors that are here tonight with us. Mr. George Belairs had many friends. Mr. George Belairs was, was a good man. He was a very good contributor to the sponge industry. He made many videos, many commercials. He promoted his business. He promoted Tarpa Springs. He loved Tarpa Springs, and it should be honored. It should be honored with all the other sponge uh, divers and all the other people that actually work and were involved in the sponge industry. My fellow commissioners, as you know, we received many letters from concerned citizens asking us to honor all the sponges the contributor in that industry in Tarpa Spring. And to name the Heritage Museum to honor all the sponges, including Mr. Belares, and to name it the Spongers Museum. Our high school that most of us graduated from, it was named to honor the Spongers. Just a few weeks ago, the Historical Society had an exhibit to honor the Greek history, and it had many photographs of all the uh, uh, the spongers and all the people working on the sponge boats. Last month, we passed a proclamation for, for the Tarpa Springs History Month, and I will read two sections of it. Proclamation the city of Tarpa Springs, Florida. Whereas in 1980, John Cheney introduced the first local sponge business in Tarpa Springs, utilizing many blocks and whites from Key West and Bahamas, and a few weeks, and, and a few Greek, Amer uh, Greek immigrants using the method of a hook sponging. Whereas in 1905, John Kokoris introduced a technique of sponge diving to Tarpa Springs with divers from the islands of Egina and Indra. Later, he brought 500 deep, deep sea fishing, I mean deep sea divers from the uh, Dodecanese Islands, Kalimnos, Haki, and Simi. He will reveal the lies of the local sponge industry and in causing Tarpa Springs to be known as the sponge capital of the world. So the, the founders, the pioneers in the sponge industry, it was John Cheney, and he was not a Greek person. And then it was John Kokoris who brought 500 people from the islands in order to create the industry here in Tarpa Springs. They developed, those two, they, the, the, um, John Cheney and John Kokoris, they developed the, uh, the culture that we cherish here in Tarpa Springs. Channel 48, he had a, a talk show, and he got the uh, public opinion on this matter. 100% of the people wanted the Heritage Museum wing to be named the Sponge Museum, and also to honor Mr. George Belairs and dedicate a section in the museum for him. I think it would be unfair if we ignore all the other sponge, sponges, including the founders, Mr. Cheney and Mr. Kokoris, 
and all the Greek Americans, the non-Greeks, and all the African Americans that actually work on the sponge boats. They're the ones that contribute to our history, to the culture that we have, and to the local economy. Let's put a questionnaire, a questionnaire attached to the water bill and let the people of Tarpa Springs tell us what they really want. Let the people tell us what they really want, not us. Because we all going to be favoring Mr. Joe's Belairs because we love them. He was our friend. But what about the other people? They have their families that worked there for years. How do they feel about it? So my recommendation is to go ahead and put a questionnaire attached to the water bill and let the people of Tarpa Springs tell us what we should do, how, what we should name the wing. And inside, we should dedicate a place for Mr. Blair's to be recognized, just like the other. Thank you. And now I'd like to go to uh, Vice Mayor Penta. Thank you. Um, certainly when I brought this, this, this item forward last year, I, I too, as, as has been said in public comment, never thought it would be controversial. Um, we're talking about naming a, a wing of a vastly underutilized city building. Building I grew up to going, going to the library there, and that's what I call, I call it the old library. And uh, I, so, I, so I thought at first, I said, I think there's some, some misconception that we were doing a George Belarus Museum, like just for him, which if you knew George, uh, he would never want that. And that's not what this is. So um, we're literally talking about putting a plaque above the door in his honor and then creating a room where everything that, that was said here tonight that the mayor just read right now, which is very important history, is then contained in that room, which currently is nothing. I think there's some exhibit in the little punch out to the uh, east there in the room. But so that, that's, that's what that, 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 that this is about, naming a wing to honor a person who did a vast amount to promote this, this, this industry. And then inside that wing, recognize and honor all these families, which currently we have no place in Tarpon Springs to, to, to uh, do that. And not that I credit myself with this, but if I had brought this up, I wonder if it, if it would ever been brought up soon to do any kind of sponge diving museum, period. And I think it's very important, as we all know that the sponge diving industry in Tarpon is you know, hurting for divers at times, that we keep that tradition alive and that we keep the names alive of the people, and like Hasn pointed out tonight, many of whom are, are, are not Greek, that, that their memories are honored and that their traditions are honored. So it's not directed towards any person on this board or in this room, but I think it is a little embarrassing that this is a controversy to put his name on a plaque above a, above a room in a, in, a, in a building that we hardly use to then inside that room promote the sponge industry. So that, that is all this is. Um, and, and, to, you know, and I respect you know, the argument, well, you know, we don't want to dishonor somebody. Well, in that case, nobody could ever name a building anything. Like you take the Leaper Ratner Museum. They don't just call it Art Museum. It's Leaper Ratner Museum. Now, it's not a museum just for Leaper Ratner. It's for other artists in there. We have the Condeck and Singletary building for the, for the uh, police department. We name buildings. We name streets. That's what we do does not diminish from anybody else. In fact, I think it then promotes others. So, um, we're, like we've talked about with multitude of issues on this board, we are tasked with making decisions on this board. This one shouldn't be controversial, but it is, I guess. So I, I don't think that's something we pass off to the public, even though I'm 99.9% .9 sure what the response would be. Um, so with that in light, I would motion to approve this ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, thank you. Um, and it is a shame that this has become so controversial. Uh, um, it, it's not only about George, and, and you know, George didn't only promote the sponging industry, it was tourism in a whole. George, my, you know, just my belief is that the sponge docks may not be where it is today because, because um, if George wasn't involved in tourism. George kept the sponge docks going. There's a, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of history there, and I understand what everybody's done in years past, but George kept it going. He brought tourism to, that commu to our community. Um, the documentaries and the, um, just the recognition that he has given our town, I, I can't even tell you. He, he just was a, p a pillar of this community. 
Um, and then our St. Pete, Clearwater St. Pete Visitors Bureau is honoring him every year with um, an annual award in his name, a tourism award in, in George's name. So if they can honor Mr. Belirus, I really think that that's something that we should be doing as well. Um, it, again, it's not naming the entire building, the entire Heritage Museum after George, it's a wing. And that's where we start. And then from there, like it's been said, we, you know, we add to it. We add um, the proclamation that the mayor just read and, and other names and whatnot. And if it's not in the museum, it could be somewhere on the sponge docks. But we need to keep, I agree, we need to keep the history alive. Um, there, there is a lot of history here in our community. And uh, we all have passion for this community, big passion for this community. So, again, George... I think that this is just so important that we honor his name. He did so much for our town, for the county, um, and for tourism in general. Um, and I think this is just the right thing to do at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as the, as uh, Vice Mayor uh, Banther and, and uh, Commissioner Slattery said, um, it, it's more about we all honor the divers that came before uh, George, and, and we all want to recognize them. Cheney and, and Kokoris are recognized on the sponge docks. But it's not just about sponge diving with George. It's about promoting Tarpon Springs. Uh, I'm a business owner on the sponge docks. I appreciate every day what George did for Tarpon Springs. Um, when I was president of the Merchants Association, I had many conversations with George. Um, he breathed and lived. Tarpon Springs. It wasn't about him. It wasn't even about sponge diving. It was about the sponge. He called it our Mickey Mouse. His biggest fear was that we were going to lose our Mickey Mouse because we only have a handful of divers left. Um, and, and he cared about the divers. He cared about the industry. He cared about Tarpon Springs. Um, he went to the Tourist Development Council meetings uh, in the county. He made sure that we were on the map. He made sure that Tarpon Springs was recognized. And it's more about the recognition of Tarpon Springs and what he did for Tarpon Springs um, as someone who marketed Tarpon Springs. That I and, and Mayor Archie, you put it uh, right, we should not be divided about this. We should be united. And inside that wing, we can then have some history and honoring the other divers uh, that came before him and, um, and, and have some history working with our historical society. And uh, so I have to agree that this wing, uh, he should be recognized and um, because he did so much for this community. As a proclamation says, he was a community leader. And I think he was a leader more than anyone else uh, on the sponge docks uh, as far as promoting Tarpon Springs and bringing people to Tarpon Springs. Um, so I appreciate everything George did for us and for Tarpon Springs and the Sponge Docks and our community. And I would agree to, to name this wing after him. Thank you. Um, I want to say thanks to the city manager about um, talking about the additional uh, history elements that we could incorporate into Tarpon Springs from the walkable standpoint, if it's down Safford, if it's down other parts uh, from the historic district to the uh, Sponge Docks. Uh, I really think that's a great idea. I, I love going to Tampa and seeing the history that they have of the the, the headshots. I think if they're bronze headshots or full statues of of history of um, where the towns come, how it was founded, with a short history uh, history blurb um, about it. So that's that's great to hear. And I, I want to echo what Mayor Archie was talking about with putting a positive spin on this because we have an opportunity to talk about a lot of history that we wouldn't necessarily be talking about today if this wasn't brought up by uh, Vice Mayor Banther. Um, with that, I know there's some concern about renaming the whole building. Um, when I found out this is a wing, I, I think I was more um, in support of this. Um, I, I do like the last one, uh, Mr. George Michael Belaris, wing to honor the sponge industry as a whole. Um, it really incorporates the whole sponge industry. Um, like everyone's been saying tonight, he's more of a spokesperson for Tarpon Springs. He is now the spokesperson potentially for the sponge industry wing. Um, so he's still continuing that on. 
although it's still honoring the sponge industry. So if I had to make a recommendation based on what I saw out of all the options, I think that would be the route to go um, with the Mr. George Michael Blair swing to honor the sponge industry. Uh, or sp uh, and then I support everything else that was said tonight, too, about honoring the rest of the spongers. So thank you. Vice right, Mayor Panther, you made a motion. Do you want to recommend any of the uh, Yes, I, I, I recommend the sign that Commissioner Carr pointed out, and that was in my email to Mr. Mr. LeCurse, I believe, as well. Which is, would you repeat that again? Which one that is? Um, it's the George Michael Blair's wing to honors uh, to honor sponge industry. I'm not sure if 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 if, if the word does should be in there. I'm, I'm not a grammar expert, but as long as it has his name and then to honor sponge uh, to honor sponge industry, so we so it's crystal clear. <laughs> As we've discussed tonight, what the purpose of, of, of that wing is, as long as it has those elements in there, that's that that that, that that's what my uh, my uh, my uh, motion is tonight. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a second. Okay. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr. Yes. Commissioner Kikta. Yes. Commissioner Sieber. Yes. Vice Mayor Vanther. Yes. Mayor loses. No. Thank you. We're now going to the item number 23. This is the ordinance 2018-06, application 17-109, Land Development Code Amendment to extend him uh, moratorium on wireless communications facilities. And this is the first reading. Ordinance number 2018-06, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, providing for extension of an established temporary moratorium on the submittal and processing of any application and issuance of any permit for location of any wireless communication facilities, towers, or antennas in the city's rights of way for a period of 120 days, providing for conflict, severability, construction, and publication, and providing for an effective date. First reading of Ordinance 2018-06 by title only was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on February 16, 2018. Thank you, staff report. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, this essentially is an extension of the existing moratorium that we are currently in for wireless communication facilities located within our public right-of-ways. When we started looking at this issue, we realized it was a much larger issue than we had first um, contemplated. With that, we're in the process of developing uh, an in-house uh, task force working with the Public Works Department planning and uh, several of the other departments to kind of develop and look at um, guidelines for design of these particular towers, especially in some of our more sensitive areas like our historic district and sponge docks in the CRA. So um, we have Carrie Lemons also sitting on that, that task force. So what we're actually asking for is a little bit more time to actually study this issue and actually some develop some regulations that are gonna allow us to look at that design component so that when a, um, provider comes into this community, they recognize that we have a standard that we want to uphold, especially in those very sensitive areas. And so that's what we really are looking for with this extension of this moratorium. Well, thank you. Do we know when this technology will be uh, introduced into the field? Um, we do not know that information. We've received um, a draft application some months back, but since we've been into a moratorium, we have not received anything additional from the industry, so we do not have anything that's actively working because we're pursuing um, the design guidelines, okay. and well, the regulations and design guidelines. Please do your best and keep all these antennas away from the main street. They're not the best looking. That's what we're looking at. Any commission comments, questions? I support this uh, item here, but it would be neat if we could figure out a way to put them inside the light pole so we don't have to see an additional. So if that's something that we can get creative with, I would recommend that somehow. Certainly we can look at that. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? You know, I need a motion. Just approve. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzis? Yes, thank you. Okay, we are now going to the item number 24, which is the ordinance 2018-02, application 17-117, Rizzoni Tagarelli Park Street Apartments. This is the second reading. This is a quasi-judicial. The city attorney will read the title, and he will explain the uh, quasi-judicial process. 
Ordinance 2018-02, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, and the official zoning map of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, for approximately 0.47 acres of property located on the northwest corner of the intersection of Park Street and Grand Boulevard, AP 17-117, from zoning designation R60, Neighborhood Conservation District, to RM15, Residential Multifamily District, providing for findings and providing an effective date. Second reading of Ordinance 2018-02 by title only was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only with a map on December 10 and 29, 2017. Uh, this application is quasi-judicial. We did have a full quasi-judicial hearing on first reading. Uh, I would ask for anyone who intends to uh, give testimony tonight to please stand and be sworn. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you'll give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I'd ask for commission to disclose any ex parte communications on this application. I spoke to one of the uh, neighbors on the phone. Okay. I'd ask for staff and applicant, um, again, as we've had a full presentation on these issues before, to please uh, Update the commission on any change conditions, any change recommendations, anything at all that would uh, supplement or uh, give additional information to their consideration, please. The only additional information we have is we have received some additional correspondence, which is located in your packet. Other than that, the application stands as it was presented at first read. Can answer any questions that you might have. Are there any questions for staff? Does the applicant wish to update the commission this evening? Uh, Mike Tagarelli, 601 Lower Lane, Tarpon Springs. Um, I've sat through the planning and zoning meeting and the first reading of this uh, rezoning, and I kept hearing the same issues from the uh, opposition. I mean, we're talking um, stormwater runoff, parking, sewage, and traffic issues. I mean, all of this is going to be addressed in a site plan, which the city um, has strict requirements that we're going to have to follow. I um, also want to mention that there's 11 sites, multifamily sites within a 500 radius of our uh, rezoning project. Also, I'd like to mention if we stay with R60, I can put a footprint of 9,000 square foot building on there versus uh, 7,000 for seven units at 1,000 square feet on the apartments. The last thing I would like to mention, I keep hearing about tenants that bring crime. Um, I'm sorry, but um, uh, tenants, all tenants are not criminals, okay? Um, yes, we're going to go through some tenants as a landlord and have to weed them out. But in my past, I've had some great tenants, and uh, uh, I myself was a tenant in the beginning of our career, as well as I'm sure a lot of people here. So to sit here and claim that all these tenants are going to be criminals, um, I, I think is not fair to uh, um, these people. That's all the comments I've had. Any other questions? I would be glad to uh, answer them. Are there any questions of the applicant? And because he brought it up and it was raised at the first uh, at the first hearing, we are discussing a rezoning tonight. We are not discussing a site plan. Correct. Yep. All right. Are the members of the public wishing to speak in opposition to the application? And folks, if it will make the evening faster, if you're going to speak in opposition or uh, in, uh, in favor of it, please move down to this area so that we can move through everybody, please. Bill Vinson, 144 North Spring Boulevard, Tarpon Springs. I live in the area um, the, of the subject property. And I was here for the PNZ hearing, and I wasn't here for the first reading, but I did see it on video. And um, I'm concerned because I hear from especially the PNZ board and from staff that oh, we're just here on a rezoning and so therefore we don't have to worry about anything. If you allow the rezoning, you open the door and it's your job to find out, to find if it's compa compatible or not. You don't have to accept the opinion of the staff. In the PNZ meeting that I was here uh, to listen to and speak against it on, the board which had a lot of new members on it, seemed to think that if the staff recommended it, that that was the opinion they had to adopt. You were here to listen. You heard some uh, evidence last time I was here. Some of it was uh, regarding safety issues and other things like that.
but the issue of compatibility of where it is. You heard in, when we were talking about the sponge docks and the walking uh, between downtown and sponge docks, this is in that path. And this is a part of town that needs to stay low density, needs to stay single family homes to as much as possible, and to um, fit in. Uh, apartments won't fit in with this neighborhood. There's some across the street, I, but you don't have to make it worse. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Christy Corpheus, 538 and a half Division Street, Tarbon Springs. I agree with what um, the previous gentleman stated. I live right there. I walk right there. I drive my kids to and from school every day in that area. It is a very unsafe intersection. The speed limit was reduced a couple years ago. People still fly around that curve. With an additional apartment building on that lot that is less than a half an acre, there is going to be numerous more foot traffic, street traffic with cars. Then with the zoning being residential, we've got the church right there. When there are events at St. Michael's, where's people, where's everybody gonna park? Our streets are already crowded enough in that area to bring more traffic in and take away from parking for the church when we do have large events there. That's all I have to say, thank you. Hello, I'm Janet Cunningham. I live on Park Street, and I'm also here to discuss the concerns that I have about whether or not we should rezone this area. As the last person just said, it is a very dangerous intersection. I know, I live there. Right now, the area is empty, and it's still very busy. A concern of having additional traffic definitely would be something that I would be worried about. The possible owner or developer talked about what had been said before about tenants and crime and how there's not really a correlation. But I remember a little more than three years ago when I sat in my house and I heard gunshots. And I think everybody here remembers that too. Those gunshots came from an apartment building located right down the street from where this prospective apartment is going to be. Safety is a paramount concern of mine for a variety of reasons. One is I'm a school teacher. And we've just dealt with a major tragedy. Again, I can't say tenants bring in crime, but I can say there's more of a chance of multiple people having more crime than having single families having crime. Stormwater runoff, absolutely. That area floods. Anyone who lives near there knows that. We don't need a hurricane to tell us that. We just sit there and look at it. More traffic in there, more people, potential for more crime. All of these things need to be considered by the commission here as a reality of what would happen if this is rezoned. We live in an area that is very unique in the Park Street area. It is right near the sponge docks. We just spent a very large amount of time talking about the heritage of Tarpon Springs, and yet we just kind of zoom by this issue. This is an area of Tarpon Springs that you walk right to between Epiphany and the Sponge Docks. The gentleman who spoke first in, um, about this issue, he said we have X number of multifamily dwellings in this area. Yeah, we do, we don't need any more. All of these are issues that I would like the commission and the mayor to consider when looking at whether or not to rezone this property. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Maritza heard us 209 Grand Boulevard. My family's been on that street all my life um, since they came over. It's changed. We could, before we had air, you had your screen doors. 
you, you slept with your doors open, your windows open, you can't do that anymore. If my window doesn't lock right, I nail it shut because I'm not, I'm scared. At 2.09, I'm two doors away from those apartments, Eureka. I saw everything that night. I've seen everything every time the police go there. When the lights start flashing, I can see it through my blinds, and I sit on my porch, and I probably should stay inside for my own safety. Um, I'm, I'm a smoker. I sit out on my porch. I don't want to blow up my house. And sometimes it's late at night, and I get scared. There's constantly people walking back and forth. And a lot of them are going into those Eureka apartments, but they're going back north Grand Boulevard. I don't know where they're coming from. The apartments that are already built there, they're not even rented. There's, there's the, the density, it's, it's just not there for that section. If you can't rent the apartments that are already there, why do you want to build more apartments? I would build single family homes. That's what that area is used to. And the way Tarpon is going, they're, they're buying the older houses and fixing them up. So they want to be in a nice neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Janie Skurdy and I live at 219 Grand Boulevard next door to Maritza. And um, I'm here this evening because I also am opposed to the rezoning application that's uh, before the commission tonight. Um, first of all, I'm really struck by the lack of information that has been provided to both the Planning and Zoning Department and the Board of Commissioners regarding this apartment project. Without a site plan and what appears really when you look at the application, to me it looks incomplete. You look at page two, there's nothing on there other than the, the flood zone designation. The city is being asked to change an existing zoning at a critical location in the heart of a historic neighborhood that's primarily comprised of single family homes. I don't understand why this is acceptable with so little information. I, does rezoning for a developer without a site plan and with very few details demonstrate any kind of forethought or smart planning? It just doesn't seem to make sense. There are so many unknowns in terms of this application that I don't think it should be surprising to anyone here why there are so many concerns that have been voiced by different neighbors. Um, people that not only live, but walk, pedal, run, drive through Grand Boulevard neighborhood. It's a critical area that connects the Spring Bayou and Business District to the Sponge Docks. I think the increased density that will result from building not four, not five, not six, but seven apartments on a lot smaller than a half an acre at an already busy, narrow, and high traffic corner will likely exacerbate existing issues at this location in terms of flooding, drainage, and most importantly, public safety. Speeding is already a problem in our neighborhood. Increasing the density with more cars is not likely to make the situation better. And there's also another aspect of the public safety concern with regards to this application. While the Eureka Apartments at 199 Grand Boulevard is the only official nuisance property in our neighborhood, apart of course from the Sun Bay Hotel and the Tarpon Inn, there are still other <laughs> serious incidents requiring police assistance in our neighborhood are not exclusive to the Eureka Apartments. While I've spoken to a lot of residents over the last few weeks um, that will state there are a number of other properties in our neighborhood that cause concern, I think all we need to do is review some of the police uh, incident reports for some of the properties even located adjacent to this parcel that's under discussion tonight. Um, the police have been called to address some pretty serious issues there. This evening, we've provided uh, members of the, the um, board with excerpts of some police incident reports for several bordering properties. Um, they're all available public record from the police department, and I would urge the commissioners to just take a few minutes at least to review these records and compare some of the recent incidents reported at 432 Roosevelt, for example. Compare the, what you see on that list to some of the recent activity also reported at the Eureka Apartments. 
please consider the wisdom of increasing density with the addition of seven living units right smack in the middle of an area that I really would argue is already pretty vulnerable. And it's a source of real concern in our neighborhood. You know, I can say with certainty that nobody in our neighborhood begrudges the applicant for wanting to develop their property. That's absolutely their right, but it can be done within the parameters of the existing zoning. Um, making it the zoning less restrictive to please one property owner with no site plan, no regard of any other factors, it just seems kind of short-sighted and with all due respect a bit irresponsible in view of some of the things that have happened in our neighborhood in, in the recent past. I, I just worry, is this the kind of precedent that the Commission wants to set for future rezoning applications? Thank you for your time and consideration. Are there other members of the public wishing to speak in opposition? Rene Torres, 400 Grand Boulevard. Um, I think besides all the things that have been said here tonight about potential crime, overdevelopment, too much traffic, the one thing that keeps you know, hitting me in the face that has not been discussed is the fact that St. Michael's Shrine gets thousands of visitors. Buses of tourists come to it. School kids play on that lot. And there seems to be, if you were building a new church anywhere, it would have a minimum requirement for open space or parking, and you are not addressing it. And I want to make a comment that the last time I was here, somebody said that, well, we trust the applicant. And this is not about trust. This is about laws and zoning as it stands. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak in opposition to the application? Good evening, Bill Plaza, 419 Roosevelt Road. Uh, before I start, uh, I did provide a page with some pictures to you, uh, commissioners. Uh, I will refer in my uh, little presentation. Uh, and maybe, Mayor, can I ask for a little bit extra time from people that will not be speaking? You must identify who they are, then you get two minutes for each person. Identify the names, please. Give us a name. In. So there's six minutes. I will not use that. Okay. Uh, during the last meeting, a lot of neighbors emotionally spoke against rezoning of this property to high density area. Uh, after the meeting, I actually looked uh, for available research uh, to compare the crime statistics to uh, from a single homes to a uh, apartment complex. In several documented uh, urban uh, cases, it was stated that there is really no basis to prove that there is a correlation between apartments and, uh, and homes. However, it's more based on the socioeconomic uh, structure of people renting that, uh, and also the density. And we're talking about increasing density in this uh, case. Uh, the higher density is also presented to you in the form of the logs, and you can see for yourself, and maybe compare to some single homes as well, to see if those logs really represent a higher uh, call logs than a single family homes. But you cannot ignore the evidence that was put in front of you. It also is pro proven that in some cases, uh, the surrounding property values go down, since potential buyers do not want live right next to an apartment or close to apartment, so they will not pay a higher price for, for a home. So based on those facts, it is reasonable to understand why there is a stigma that comes really, really with the apartment homes. This kind of stigma also exists with the chain restaurants. You, as a board of commissioners, do not want to spoil the purity of the town, so you do not allow chain restaurants in the historic areas. You are dealing with a similar stigma. Now for, from the safety concerns. I would like to emphasize to you once again a traffic safety aspect of the corner of Grandin Park. And here's my research on that. 
The east side corner of Park and Grand is a blind corner. You have to almost come to uh, uh, all the way on a Grand Avenue in order to see uh, uh, traffic coming in from the south. And this is your pic picture one and two. This is how people stop in this, in this area. This section of park uh, from Alt 19 all the way to Grand is a one-way street and it's 18 feet wide. Park Street on the west side of Grand Avenue, adjacent to the property in this application, is a two-way street. At, this, at times, you have to actually scrape the uh, curb in order to pa safely pass another vehicle. And I know you would, uh, would ask, why is that? And I can tell you that. Park Street uh, west of the Grand, uh, Grand Boulevard is only 17 feet wide. 17 feet wide, which is a minimum suggested uh, width for residential street without a truck traffic. And this is a two-way street. That means that you will have a hard time turning into uh, Park, uh, Park Street uh, from Grand, or when a small boat trailer comes from the Turtle Cove or a truck from Hellas, you, you will not get through. Uh, Park Street is all, also offset, it zigzags. And if you uh, look at it, it's not a straight, really a straight intersection. If you look at this uh, on pick number five, actually it depicts it really nice. Grand Boulevard is curved at the same intersection. So you have another roadblock for, for the traffic. This combined with a lack of designated truck uh, route to the historic district and a lack of parking egress from the pink apartments where the cars are backing out because we did not make the provisions for enough parking spaces and a turnaround at, the, uh, at this uh, property. Already makes the corner of Grand and Park a very, very unsafe. And now we want to put more traffic in a higher density area in this area, in, in the, the, this intersection. It doesn't make sense. Uh, I would like to thank the, the police chief uh, for more police presence and for speed indicator that was placed uh, on this property uh, after the last meeting. This is pic picture three and four. I observed this, uh, this device myself on Monday morning. However, I wasn't able to really decipher how fast the cars were going because anything over 30 miles an hour, it, it just flash slow down. Well, uh, it happened a lot on Monday morning. And since I can't give you really data to really substantiate my findings, uh, maybe police chief will be able to give you data from the indicator. Commissioners, please put yourself in our situation. If those apartments were being built next to your house, how would you vote? And I am so glad that you're representing the people of Tarpon Springs the city of many families, not only one family. During the last meeting, a lot was said about the character of the family that's gonna build this property. Well, I understand the loyalty to long-term residents, and I don't knock you for that. And I admire those that can put their own res uh, reputation on the line for others. Please do not forget that long-term residents are opposed to rezoning as well. Please consider that in your decision making. You have heard, heard many emotional uh, speeches over the last two hearings, over safety issues, and, uh, and it's all about the town. People that care about the, the growth of the city, but the growth in the right direction. A high density area in this neighborhood is truly not in the right direction. It's a single family neighborhood. Just because somebody made a mistake in the past and allowed the eyesores to be built doesn't mean that we have to follow that. Let's don't use that as a precedent. All these neighbors are very concerned over safety issues, traffic impact, crime, water runoff, infrastructure capability and appearance of the neighborhood that comes with the apartment complex. And I stand united with them. So even though I am a very open-minded individual, if you see the research that I've done, uh, I am still against rezoning. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. 
Any others wishing to speak in opposition, please? I'm Lois Barth. I have a property at 116 Reed Street. I will be very brief because I spoke at the other two meetings. I concur with the other people who are opposed to the rezoning change. And I question, as the property has been zoned single family appropriate for three houses, why would there now be the desire to change it to multifamily housing? I mean, at one point it was decided that there should be three single family homes there. And I'm asking that the residents of the nearby community area are seeking the support of city council members to maintain our quiet and safe neighborhood by not approving a denser housing plan. Thank you. Other members of the public wishing to speak in opposition? Uh, Steve Sillig is here. I'm uh, at 431, 431 Grand. I live almost next door to St. Michael's and almost next door to the property in question. Mr. Mayor Alahuzas, you did a magnificent job in describing the history of Tarpon Springs. I was going to bring up something, but I think you covered it very well. I was going to start with what made Tarpon Springs famous. It was a lowly sponge and the sponge divers that brought it up. But in, in addition to that, what is making Tarpon Springs famous and a, an attraction for many people around the country and the world are, is a metaphysical aspect of the St. Michael's, the rel religiosity of the situation, that property was bequeathed by Mr. Cantonis for a moderate sum to be used as parking for St. Michael's. There has been conjecture as to whether the property, if it was changed, the zoning was changed, whether or not it would be sold, and what, what would be built on that property in the future. Uh, mixed use, a building with mixed use building would be part of the multi-zoning multi our RM15 residential multifamily allows mixed use building on that property. A mixed use building could be a storefront underneath and a residential on top. Now that wouldn't fit into the property to the area uh, motif. So uh, if the property was rezoned, which I'm against, and I'm not knocking the Tiger Rally family at all, not in the least. I think they did a good job in construction. I, I'm not knocking their, 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 their construction process, but I am against the rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, George Scutellis, 216 Grand Boulevard. And um, I'm not going to repeat what my neighbors have said, but I 100% are backing them. Um, that property should be family homes, people that are vested not only in the neighborhood, but our city. Um, I know no one has a crystal ball and can tell what kind of people are going to move in or move out, whatever. But um, when I looked at these incidents reports, I was actually appalled. I, not even thinking about what kind of incidents happen 100 feet away from my house where I have three girls and a son that basically live with me. Um, just page two, sexual abuse, countless warrants, gunshots, domestic. I mean, I, I could talk all three and a half more minutes on this, but please we don't need any more apartments in the neighborhood. Thank you. Are there any other folks wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Seeing none, are there folks that wish to speak in support of the application? Does the applicant wish to address the council in closing?
Uh, Mayor, commissioners, um, we heard Ms. Skirty uh, report at 432 and the Eureka Apartments had police activity. Well, at 400 Roosevelt, there's been no police activity. So that's our building and that's the type of landlords that we are. Uh, we screen our tenants and we make sure they're pretty good tenants. Um, as for parking, the lot was never purchased for the parking of St. Michael's. Uh, St. Michael's was always built in 19, well, it was built in 1941, and I'm sure, Mr. Mayor, you know all this, that, um, you know, there was never a parking lot thought of when this uh, shrine was built. And I can go a little bit deeper on some conversation uh, with the uh, owner of the shrine, and I'm talking about the spiritual owner of the shrine, and has only talked about building a shrine, not a parking lot. Um, the value of the properties, if you go from Division Street, um, north to the docks, uh, drive up and down to the streets and tell me what you see. That's all I'm going to say. Tell me what you see. You're going to see a new project here that's going to value, uh, raise the value of the properties in the neighborhood, not decrease it. Um, as for all the other concerns they keep talking about, they're, they're, I shouldn't be penalized um, for their concerns. The city gives me the right to do this rezoning, and if they didn't want to do it, this shouldn't be there available for me to pursue. Thank you. Staff wish to make a closing summary. Not at this time. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Are there any uh, commission comments, questions? Vice Mayor Pence. Yes, thank you. Um, I, will, I will continue my, uh, my non-support of this item. I, I typically, you know, am pro development, but I do have some concerns with it with the with the compatibility of this rezoning on that property. And and uh, typically, what has been done before when we have issues like that, this apartment is unique. We only have so many more 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 areas to build, so we give that respect to to uh, to uh, developers. They would submit a a, a, a site plan for, it. because as Mr. Vinson very well pointed out. It's not, this is not just a simple rezoning. By rezoning, we are then allowing things to happen. And I think when you have, you have a piece of property which is very sensitive, um, that, uh, submit, s s s that um, having a developer submit a site plan first is a gesture of goodwill and helps us help them, uh, uh, you know, give them an approval like was done with Bayshore Heights. Um, so, as was stated very clearly in the first reading, the applicant does not wish to submit a, a site plan first. Um, I, I, I just have um, a lot of concerns about the compatibility of this rezoning in that um, street there. So, I would motion to uh, deny. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kick. Thank you. Um, you know, a, lot, a lot's been brought out here again this evening, uh, like at, at our first meeting. Um, and I still stand by uh, um, approving this zoning change. You know, when we talk about gunshots, I was in your area. I was on Roosevelt visiting a friend, and I had to call the police because there was somebody shooting a rifle or shotgun. I don't even know the difference between those two things. But anyway... I'm not a gun person, but I know I don't like them. And somebody shot one. I had to call the police department. The shots came from a house on Roosevelt. They didn't come from the apartments. They came from a house. The SWAT team came out. They closed the streets down. They arrested the person. So it, it didn't come from an apartment. Um, and to compare what happens at the Eureka apartments, that's not fair either to our applicant or the situation. We don't know. Um, who would be renting from from the applicant? And uh, I'm sure he, I'm sure they'll have some criteria, and we'll screen their screen their um, people people that want to come live there. But again, that really shouldn't have anything to do with what we're here tonight and discussing. Is what we're discussing is rezoning at this point. Um, traffic. There would be a traffic study when it comes to site plan. Uh, again. Um, there's so many other uh, issues that you've all brought up this evening that do come at, at site plan uh, review. And this, this passed our planning and zoning board six to one. And uh, 
honestly, and I know there was some comments that um, alluded to us rubber stamping what um, our staff recommends, and that is certainly not true, certainly not true. Um, we're here to study the facts and take into consideration all the facts. And um, there's many times we don't agree, or at least I know I don't agree with what staff has to say. We do rely on their expertise at times, but we're not rubber stamping what they are suggesting. Again, this did get, uh, this project was approved six to one with planning and zoning, and I will still uh, stand by uh, my support of this application. Thank you. Commissioner Carr. I don't have a whole lot to say. I want to say thank you to the community that came out and spoke. Thank you to the applicant that's here and also to staff. Uh, obviously, this is a very uh, sensitive situation. Um, I, I do lean on the compatibility of the neighborhood uh, and do share some concerns with the compatibility of this also with the way the neighborhood has been going and is heading. Um, so I don't have anything further to say. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you all for coming, and, and I appreciate your concerns and, and speaking here tonight. Um, we talk about this property as it becoming a, a future crime scene. Uh, and I know we don't have a site plan. I agree that maybe we should have a site plan, but we're talking about rezoning. Uh, and this property is zoned for up to three single family homes. So there would be traffic with three families living there as well. So that the increase in traffic, I, I don't see the increase in crime. Villa Plumosa is down the street. I don't think they've brought crime to the to the neighborhood. It's a very well respected condo. So I, I don't see that because it's an apartment that it couldn't be a nice place that brings value to the to the community or to that neighborhood. I go by there a hundred times a day. Um, I do see things that go on at Eureka Apartments, and I, and I'm appalled. But I don't think, and anything that comes before us as far as a site plan or um, anything that we must see or planning and zoning must see has to be approved before we, you know, before he goes forward, Mr. Tagarelli. So as far as drainage and and uh, you know what the place will look like, uh, those are all things that have to be approved by planning and zoning. It's a long process. Um, and that site plan could increase your property values and take care of your drainage issues and and uh, help build help build something that's that's nice there um, and and increase your values. Like I said, so um, I stand by my vote last week as well um, and and uh, allowing the the application to to be approved. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. It's nine. It's after nine o'clock, and you're still here tells me how much you're concerned, and I will thank you for all the letters that you send us expressing your opinions and your concern. Uh, there's no question in my mind that uh, uh, Mr. Tagorelli is going to put a nice building there, but the question is not the quality of the building. Uh, we know that we need more housing here in Tarpa Spring, but also we, from hearing from all the neighbors that there's a concern, there's a safety concern, there's a concern of a uh, compatibility here. And I have to share that concern to all of you because you don't, you, you cannot live in fear in, in your own homes. So I will stand with, uh, with my vote that I did the last time. Uh, I do have a um, motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, roll call, please. This is to deny. Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? No. Commissioner Sieber? No. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzas? Yes. Thank you. Well, that concludes the, uh, oh, excuse me, we have one more. We have item number 25 to reaffirm the appointments of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Let me get to the 25. <clears throat> this is an easy one since all the members want to return. Um, so. <laughs> This is, uh, <laughs> this is a very straightforward. Everybody wants to continue serving, so we have no more new ones. So, um, is any, if there's no comments, I need a motion for that. Second. Um, 
Are there any public comments of this item? <laughs> <laughs> we have a first and a second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzas? Yes, thank you. Well, that concludes the regular session agenda, and we go to the staff comments. Major Young, thank you for being here tonight. No, thank you for having me. Do you have any comments for us? No comments. City Attorney? No comments. City Manager? Uh, I'm sure somebody else is going to talk about the benefit for the firefighting child on Friday. And we got Touch a Truck on Saturday, so there's, there's, there's two good events. Obviously, uh, the clerk, I don't want to steal your thunder, so I'll let, I'll let her talk about the great job that we've done for what we're going to see on, uh, on uh, Friday. But again, Touch a Truck's a little early this year. We're trying a little early. Um, so it's going to be a bang, bang, good events on Friday and Saturday. Hopefully everybody can make it to. Well, thank you. Madam City Clerk. Um, I'll just touch real quickly on the spaghetti dinner. Uh, I believe we're sold out as of today and ticket wise. Uh, however, we're still accepting uh, donations uh, for the cause. Uh, and we'd like to thank everyone who has donated uh, wonderful items uh, to be in our silent auction. Um, so enjoy. It's going to be from 3 to 7 on Friday, the 23rd. I'm ready to build that hockey stick. And, and uh, thank you for organizing <laughs> this event. It's, it will be very successful. And, uh, and I'm sure Vice Mayor Panther and I, we can't wait to serve the people. Yes. <laughs> 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 Make sure you wear a white shirt, too, with the <laughs> spaghetti sauce. Well, I plan on being there, hopefully, to help ser uh, sell uh, raffle tickets for the auction items and whatnot. Okay. Um, so make sure I'll, I will be there for that. Or if I have to serve, whatever you need me for, I'm there. Um, also, this weekend, um, the Elks Lodge is having a health and safety fair. Um, we are giving out free backpacks filled with all kinds of school items for the children. Um, There'll be drug awareness there. There'll be our police department will be there. Um, Dr. DiDonato, I fire department hasn't responded yet. Um, we've asked the fire department to be there. And I meant to ask chief, <laughs> I forgot. Um, we'll have hot dogs and snow cones and some healthy food as well. Uh, it's, it's a free event. And again, it's to promote um, health and, and safety to the children. So please come out. It's on this Sunday from 12 to 3. And I believe the CAP Center has their, has their fundraiser, fundraiser as well on Sunday, which at, starts at 3 o'clock at in Innisbrook, um, which I plan on being there as well. So um, uh, we have a busy weekend in town. I guess I'm going to be absent. I already <laughs> go to Innisbrook. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this job and safety for do snow cones for a while before I have to go over to Innisbrook, oh, okay. I guess, or something. So, you know, please come out and, uh, um, here's the, uh, I forget, but anyway, um, there's, there's a lot of people in the community coming out for this, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, like I said, it's free to anybody that wants to come. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Pence. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm, I, I'm excited for the spaghetti dinner on Friday, though I don't eat spaghetti, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, that shows you what kind of community that we live in. Not saying nobody else would do that type of thing anywhere else, but the response we've gotten that we're sold out, that you go in the clerk's office and you see the vast amounts of things that have been donated, yeah. it should be encouraging that um, we do that for our, our, our own here. And I'm not surprised at all. And a reminder, we do have a, a meatless sauce, right, Irene? We so, do. So it is, it is uh, Lent friendly. If that's, if, if, if oh, you're, that's right. uh, it's Friday. Yes, if you're celebrating that. So um, when I was in Dublin last, last, last week, as you all saw on Facebook, I got to meet the Lord Mayor of Dublin, give him a key to the, the city of Tarpon Springs. Um, I'm not sure he knew where, where Tampa Bay was, <laughs> let alone Tarpon Springs. But um, I, I, you know, we gave him a statue that Irene gave me a little sponge ever. My wife brought him some soap from the docks and then a sponge from Athena's shop and some soaps and then some uh, starfish from the beach she got him. So he was very overwhelmed and assured that if he's ever around these parts that he will come here. So <laughs> nice little opportunity to, to do that. Any reminder when we're all traveling, whether it's domestic or abroad, we're all, we're all ambassadors of Tarpon and to take those opportunities as you can. So thank you. Thank you. 
Let me proceed. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'll be at the spaghetti dinner. I'm looking forward to it. And the CAP Center uh, is having their fundraiser at Innisbrook at 3 o'clock on Sunday. Uh, I'm glad Touch a Truck is a little earlier so everyone can come to the wine walk at 4 o'clock <laughs> right after that. Uh, so the wine walk is from 4 to 8. Uh, we're almost sold out with tickets at this point. So uh, it's always a very successful event. And February, especially right now with season, it, it's quite, quite packed. So uh, get your tickets if you haven't gotten them already. Yeah, I just want to touch on uh, one or two quick things. Um, I was out and about this weekend. I was driving back home, and I came across two cop cars behind a woman uh, stopped on Tarpon Avenue. I'm like, oh, what, the, what happened here in this situation? The cops were helping. The woman put gas in her car. I thought it was refreshing to see. It really felt like a small town, um, seeing the cops help out a, a local resident or visitor, whoever it was. And then I also saw on social media yesterday um, a similar situation where another police officer was helping pushing a vehicle into a parking spot that broke down as well. So again, thank you to your staff that's working with uh, the residents. It's encouraging to see. It feels like a small town uh, when you see the police department involved with the residents like that. And I hope everybody has a great week. Thanks uh, for the birthday cake also, or the cupcakes to Irene and the, the clerk's office. Well, thank you. I'm not going to repeat all the same things we already said, but um, I'd like to remind to everyone that March 1st, thir Thursday, March 1st, we have the uh, Sunset Beach concert, and that starts at 7 p.m. That's a free event, and it's a very popular. Uh, on Friday, March 2nd, we have the first Friday. This is a very popular event. That begins at 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. on Tarpon Avenue. I'd also like to welcome the new businesses in Tarpon, Fit Yoga Factory, and Party Pearl. And Poke Bowl. Poke oh, yeah, they bowl already were told the last time. <laughs> yeah. i uh, also like to congratulate our culture and civic uh, service director, Diane Woods, and our project director, Tina Bucavalos, for receiving a grant of $20,000 uh, from the National Arts Association uh, to continue promoting um, important programs that represent our uh, Greek culture here in Tarpa Springs. And that concludes our uh, regular session meeting tonight, and it's adjourned at 9.22 p.m.